be sitting reading in between your lines Because I miss you all the time So Exactly. 
let's cry together. So, did you fucking miss me? <laughs> because I did miss you. I did miss you, my dears. It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you like... Uh, I really want to stay at your house. Yes, our main team of the uh, cyberpunk engineers. Yes, I can finally tell you that. That song is therapy. Oh, God. Like, I liked, you know, uh, after... Um, after Edrunners came out, I really liked the tweet from uh, Vesna. You know, uh, Vesna wrote, uh, No one gives me this depression is to the project. <laughs> you know, so hey, here you go. Hello, Riffy, great to have you with us. Uh, hello, Sapphire, uh, it's great that you're with us. I hope something's going well. Uh, greetings for mom, uh, by the way. <laughs> Enola wrote, thanks for depression. Oh, thank you, my friend. This is exactly what for I was training to be a psychologist, you know? This is what it helps you to do. Pablo asks, Pablo, which topic I should start asking questions about? I, I don't know, Pablo. Uh, 1.69, I, I suspect. Right? Um, Pablo, I think this is exactly the question you have. Uh, yeah, exactly. Ask about 1.7. Yeah, I mean, why, why go? <laughs> yeah, Jeducible wrote 1.7 when, exactly, thank you. Uh, finally, uh, someone was brave enough to ask. I mean, it's two minutes of the stream already, so why the hell... Why, why the hell have you guys been waiting so long? What song is that? MM Chon asks. This is I Really Want to Stay at Your House. Uh, our main team of Edgerners. Radek 3 load. Phantom Liberty looks sick. Thank you, my friend. I really like that you guys like the teaser. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. So, uh, my friend Miles Toast is raiding. Hello, Miles. Miles was streaming actually last two hours. Miles is our acting lead level designer on the new Witcher saga. Thank you so Miles, Miles for being for us with us. So Miles, I have a song for you. I have a song for you. Uh, Miles, you know, the one that I think uh, all of us like. Uh, something for you. Uh, sp uh, you know, specifically with dedication for me, from me. You know, uh, Miles, uh, so that Miles has a proper entree, you know, with a proper banger. Um, Miles, I hope you had a great stream. Yeah, this is a proper banger, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? Fucking love this song. <laughs> if I would say wrestler, this would be my entrance song, Miles Roast, uh, wrote. Absolutely. Yes, this is the Rebel Path, of course, from the original soundtrack. I love this song. Milesu, how was the stream? I saw that you were uh, location guessing, uh, you know, from, uh, from Edgerners. I think it's a great idea to do with your stream. Especially that, you know, you had a lot to do with locations. Thank you so much, Kogito, for gifting the subs. Man, you are the best. So, I mean, starting from that, guys, thank you so much um, for being here. I wanted to introduce our Reds and moderators. Kogito, you crazy lad, exactly. So, uh, I wanted to mention all of the tunes that are here with us. We have Ayano, our UI producer. Thank you so much, Ayano, for being here with us. Ayano's actually... Uh, one of the uh, people in the closing squad with me. We are the people that are responsible for actually closing and wrapping up the patches. And um, she is an absolute, uh, an amazing help. Um, so thank you so much, Ayano. Ayano is streaming Destiny and Horizon from what I know. And you can check it out in my recommended streamers. Aside of Ayano, we have, of course, 
um, Miles, our acting lead level designer. I need to get to uh, get used to your new title, Miles. By the way, Miles was prom promoted around a month ago, I believe, or a month and a half. Congratulations, Miles. Uh, and then, aside of that, we have Kaitek Kapuscinski. So, Kaitek is our uh, lead cinematic designer on the new Witcher saga. Thank you so much, Kaitek, for being here. Kaitek was uh, at least once, or not twice, a guest here on the stream. I hope you guys remember Kayetan. Uh, we have uh, Chivok, our customer support engineer. Uh, that's a guy who's responsible for making sure that a lot of the issues you guys, you guys point out are actually getting uh, to Ayano, to me, you know, so that we can handle them uh, for you. Uh, thank you so much, Chivok, for being with us. Uh, we have Mazi, uh, our uh, art lead QA. Uh, thank you so much, Mazi, for being here. I remember your title properly. Uh, I'm, I'm pestering Mazi of all the, you know, regarding all the art issues uh, that we are finding, but of course he, most cases, knows about it much better than me. Uh, so, you know, uh, but we are cooperating very closely. And then we have Small Sandai, of course, Kira, our in-game photographer. Thank you so much, Kira, for being with us. Uh, so you probably have seen uh, Kira's shot, uh, the uh, V with the uh, David Martinez jacket, you know, standing with that uh, mega building. This is the work from Kira and our in-game photographers. Uh, really badass shot. And I think I mentioned all the reds, if I didn't, uh, if I didn't miss anyone, at least the ones that I saw. Um, and I wanted to, of course, mention our amazing moderators that I already did, but uh, not to forget anyone. Um, my dear girlfriend, Sapphire, uh, we've been away for a week uh, in Rome, uh, celebrating her birthday. Uh, that's why I was gone last week, because we were traveling. Uh, but uh, we are back. We actually like really came back to our uh, cities yesterday. <laughs> so that was crazy, right? But uh, not gonna lie, but it was nice. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, my dears. Uh, so uh, let's play something uh, something strong uh, for, for now. So, you know, Jesus, uh, there's so many banging songs I can pick from. Um, let's maybe uh, listen to some... Uh, some proper combat music, because why not? Right now. Um, and uh, last but not least, the person that I mentioned, almost the first, uh, Kogito. Uh, Kogito, our amazing moderator, he's with us a, since a year and a half. Uh, thank you so much, Kogito, for gifting all the subs and for being with us. And this is, of course, the scavenger hunt for you, my dears. Okay, I think we have all the introductions out of the way. I hope so. Zebzdi, uh, Zebzdi just gifted subs to the channel. Thank you so much. It's really appreciated. You are, you're amazing. You guys are so awesome. Uh, thank you so much for being here. So, my dears, uh, where's the distraction guy? I want some distraction. Asha Swelke wrote. I mean, you know, um, I think uh, David is uh, chilling. I think David's chilling. So, um, David's chilling. David's chillin'. Uh, Pablo asks, Pablo, what you can talk about patch 1.6? What exactly did you uh, work on for the patch? Well, I mean, so it's a bit more complicated question because like I am uh, directing Quest Open World and Cinematics, as you know. So in 1.6, we have added the three gigs. We have added the over the edge quest. So that this is a work of my department. So I was directing that. I was feedbacking the story. I was direct feedback, feedbacking the design, uh, reviewing it, discussing things with the designers. Um, wasn't working on it like with my own hands, but I was basically working with the team uh, to do that. So that's like the most direct things. And there was like uh, I would say plenty of work you know uh, together with that we did all the you know uh, road race implementation so our uh, tombs uh, that I wanted to shout out for uh, our amazing gameplay team 
uh, specifically our Vancouver team uh, that was working on a road racer uh, game, but also, you know, our UI team um, did, did uh, so much work, you know, for the road race game. Um, so uh, on the side of my department specifically, we've been implementing that game uh, in the game, placing all the, you know, all the, the machines like in the apartments, but also doing the rewards uh, for the machines and so on. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a thing. Then we did like a lot of hidden content that I'm not going to talk about because you guys didn't find it. I saw you guys found some stuff, uh, but uh, you didn't find everything um, because you're slow. <laughs> so, uh, so, so that is that was the thing. And then you know, as I mentioned, like together with Ayano, we are in the closing squad. So, sort of like we are like I don't know if you guys know it, but basically in in triple A industry or like in the biggest games, you normally have people who are like pretty like multidisciplinary team. Normally it's a small team, it's like few people. In our case it's like 10 or 10 or so uh, team uh, that are rotating in that group who are responsible for basically taking, putting the patch together, sort of. So like deciding what goes in, what goes out, deciding what to focus on in a way, um, you know, and so on. So uh, that was like a lot of my work, basically making sure that, you know, um, like all the most important stuff, at least at the uh, for for the patch is is done for you. And I've been doing the work of a of a closer in a closing squad quad since 1.3, I believe. So like I've been working on all of the patches since 1.3. I think so. I'm quite sure it was since 1.3. So yeah, uh, that was uh, that is the um, answer for your question, Pablo. Um, I also like fix bunch of bunch of issues, you know, myself and so on. But that is, uh, you know, I would say less uh, important. Uh, so um, nothing maybe more specific to point out. Okay, uh, my troops, something more. Uh, I hope our, um, I hope Kira's with us because this is Cyber Ninja, uh, as you maybe remember. Cyber Ninja. This is a tune that plays out when you battle Oda in the game. Right. That is basically. That is basically what, what it is. Uh, Poinzy Dart, thank you so much, my friend, for uh, the sub. Um, Jesus, there's so much question. The questions I'm barely keeping up. I'm sorry, my friends. Uh, Noonwing, uh, hello, my friend. Great to have you with us. Hidden content, tell me. Delamain asks. Well, I mean, so uh, in bunch of patches. Since one point, oh god, um, I don't want to confuse you guys. I th definitely in 1.5, but I think since 1.3, we were adding things that were um, content or content related, because they were sometimes no, um, they were sometimes not quite content per se, but content related things. We've been doing it since 1.3 at least, um, and uh, and all like not everything has been noted on the patch notes, as you know. Uh, that's why we basically put this note in the patches that, you know, there's much more for you to discover. Uh, and it's actually so funny for me sometimes because I go on Reddit, right? Or like on our forums. And I see people talking like, I feel that this thing is different. Like, did they change that? And, and then, and then you know, people talk together of like, oh yeah, no, they didn't. No, they did. Oh no, this has been in the game since 1.3. No, this has been added in 1.6. And I'm just sitting there reading this because I mostly know when it was added. Like mostly, right? Because it's, you know, it's complicated to, to know everything. But because I, I do work on the patches uh, in the closing squad, it's, uh, it's, uh, I mostly know what's, what the hell is happening there. So <laughs> I just read those discussions and I'm like, and it's actually so funny sometimes because you can see that people who are coming back to the game like uh, and i think we had the most people with 1.5 and then 1.6 coming up you can see like people discussing oh yeah you know i found this new thing a and then everyone says oh yeah they clearly added it and i'm like that's been there all the time <laughs> or like that's been there since like 1.2 or something you know uh but people are like yeah this is new this hasn't been there i'm like no it's just you didn't find it um you know but but again uh, it's it's really 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 uh fun for me to actually observe this it's like you know guys like my fucking guilty pleasure do you remember like when i tweeted um it was like a week ago or something that I asked, hey guys, how's 1.6 performing for you? You know, any issues, any problems that you see, anything you don't like that we did, anything you like that we did so that I know, you know, where the fuck we are, you know, on, on track with stuff. 
and um and i and i yeah I, and i always read it I, there was like 400 comments or something i literally le read every single one of them uh and, and then like make sure uh, the issues are, you know, either found, reported, tracked, or, you know, if I know because sometimes people think something is not working, but it is, or something is in progress, and so I, I just need to be sure that, um, you know, like I'm on, on the top of that topic. But um, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best, my chums, uh, to do that. Uh, and I'm really looking forward, you guys, to find it. You know what was the most heartbreaking thing? But it was also like, you motherfuckers are so fucking clever, honestly. So, second day, second day 1.6 is out, right? There's already a mod that allows you to cheat on Road Racer and fucking be the first so that you don't have to win the rewards. You motherfuckers, I was like, these guys are fucking... Like, seriously, like, we were, like, playtesting it, making sure it's difficult, right? Like, making sure it's, like, actual challenge, right? Uh, like playtesting, making sure you need to fucking catch the carrots and the apples and all that shit. Literally, second day there is a mod that allows you to skip the reward, the 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 uh, the, the the whole competition basically, and you're like first on the list. I'm like, this is just, <laughs> this is just so dreadful. But anyway, I actually I actually like next time next time we can do this thing because we have added cross progression, right? Next time we'll do it that you need to like beat it on the console. So that we have information from your cross progression save, so that you can have it, so that you can fucking cheat. <laughs> that is a solution. That is a that is a solution. How do you, how do you guys like that? That is that is very clever. That is a very clever idea. Uh, you know, that's a that's a that's a good plan. Yeah, I I like that too. Anyhow, uh, Rotary is difficult as Souls Gate. I mean, seriously. So with Rotary's difficulty, right? I go on like uh, Twitter, uh, sorry, I go on Reddit. I see the guy, or no, that was Twitch. I see the guy try to beat the game, right? And he did like one time, one time like failed really quickly. Second time kind of, and then the third time he tried, he was like second place. I'm like, what? <laughs> Seriously, that was like so difficult. And the guy caught it like so fast. And I was like, this is insane. Like literally, when people got like the the glitch mechanics uh, with the with the roach, I was like, this is so this is so insane. Um, and then another streamer that I was watching, two hours straight, uh, like I think like the top was like slot eight or something, right on the list. And I'm like, fuck, this game is too difficult, you know. So it's like, I mean, good luck, you know. Seriously, like good luck with balancing this, right? Because like some of you. Are like oh yeah you know second try third try you know and I'm almost at the top without cheating and then some of you are like literally two hours straight of fucking grinding and then and then you're not even like you're on the list but you're like at the bottom of the list not even getting the rewards because rewards are from slot five up anyhow uh, really wild really really <laughs> really wild I tell you that I tell you that um, Anyhow, uh, Blairkey. Blairkey asks uh, uh, another short question. Whose decision was the Edge Runners intro song and how much of a smirk had you when you first heard saw it in the intro? Anyway, great game uh, and great anime. Thank you and the whole team so much. So, first of all, my friend, I haven't been working directly on the anime. Like, I didn't do any, like, actual work. I was doing some consultation. I was talking multiple times with Rafa Yaki, with Saraya Elder, who is our uh, Japanese uh, producer and who was co operating very closely with Trigger. So my role was mostly advisory regarding like what to do and how, like for instance, like when they wanted to like use a proper, you know, widgets for UI regarding calls, right? So they were asking me, hey, Pava, you know, what should we use and stuff? So it was basically, I was more helping them out with like cohesiveness with the game and so on. So this is this was basically my role um, and it was a small role. Uh, and I, I had fun. Uh, doing that, but there was not much more that I was doing. Uh, we had a, we had a fantastic team on the anime. I mean, the quality of the anime I th I think speaks for it. Um, 
and I hope you guys watched it uh, already. We have we have like binged it, uh, you know, together with uh, with Sapphire. Just the whole fucking ten episodes, so insane. Uh, but anyway, I, I loved it. But your question, uh, the choices of the songs, I believe that was our um, the director on the side of the uh, trigger was responsible for it. So I I really cannot answer. Uh, this question, I knew of course that the songs, uh, that the like music from the game is going to be picked. Um, so that's as much as I can share. Um, uh, does Phantom Libre take place outside the Night City or the new area on the current map? Mm, well, I mean, I, I cannot speak too much about this, my friends. You know it. This is about new content. So I'm not talking about new content. I'm not talking about new content. Like, if you want to know like the the most update regarding the the uh, you know um, the um, expansion, uh, just uh, rewatch the videos, rewatch the stream, rewatch the Night City Wire. You know, there's a lot of information there. A lot of information there. And I see like even people like sometimes confused like on on Reddit. Um, you know, talking like when when stuffs are coming or who what is coming. I'm like, it's literally there in the video. Just watch the video. Just watch the video. I I, I don't want to say anything more because it will end up in some fucking news, and um, we don't want that. We want uh, you know nice and cool and cozy stream. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys are here. Uh, I can talk to you, fucking about everything, when it's out. <laughs> okay, I can talk to you everything when it's out. Okay. Nocturne wrote, uh, Pavel and Reds, congratulations on the th for three masterpieces of the Phantom Liberty trailer and Edge Runners and the patch. I feel so spoiled and grateful. Uh, thank you so much, Nocturne. Actually, I actually tweeted uh, today because like we have broke 80,000 players, concurrent players on stream, on stream, on Steam, uh, which is, you know, it's only one platform. There are also other platforms that are performing pretty well. And um, uh, the, the, the thing is that, um, um, I, I feel so grateful, you know, that we have this second chance, kind of, you know, with Cyberpunk. I really feel so grateful uh, that we have this second chance. It, it feels so amazing. Uh, I see Kira Kira wrote, uh, I'm here, uh, I'm glad, I'm sorry, I'm so behind in the chat that it's not even funny. Uh, Danny958, thank you so much, my friend, for gifting the subs uh, <laughs> to actually Ayano and Korpik. And Martin, all of the uh, all of the regulars. Thank you so much, Danny. I really appreciate it. Surya027 wrote, love the game. Uh, love you back, my friend. Thank you so much. Ragnar is someone who was following the game before the launch. Recently watched Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I love seeing the hype around Cyberpunk again. Hyped for Phantom Liberty. Yeah, I'm hyped as well. I'm hyped, hyped as well. Wish we had more. Uh, Adam Smasher content, Orion, uh, or, or Orion 33, 15 wrote. Well, I mean, you, you have more uh, 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 Adam Smasher content in the anime. You know, we we we, we knew that. You know, there's uh, so many of you um, sick fucks. You know, uh, all all wet for uh, the metal, the metal uh, man. So uh, here you go. You know. <laughs> Here you go. So uh, I hope that the I hope that um, Smasher's wife. Oh yeah, I see Smasher's wife laughing. You feel called out? Do you feel called out, uh, Smasher's wife? I'm just checking. I'm just checking on you if they're there. Did you watch the anime, by the way? Uh, Smasher's wife. I, I'm curious. You know how you felt, uh, especially regarding the ending. Uh, no spoilers, by the way. But yeah. Chimefrach. Uh, Timefrach. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm reading this name correctly. It kind of sounds a bit uh, Arabic. Um, time, uh, chai, chai Loving the new transmog system. Can't wait for the police overhaul that was announced on ICT Wire. But I found myself wondering exactly how intense the overhaul is. Because right now NPCs can barely drive without glitching all over the place or crashing. And it clears street races the other cars can't keep up unless intentionally slow down. Oh, my friend. I mean, so I am very, very, very aware of all the issues you pointed out. Um, that's maybe one thing. Uh, the dev team and the, the crew that is responsible for it is really aware. Uh, Gabe, our game director, is very aware um, of all those issues that you are pointing out. Um, and that is as much as I can say, I think. 
Uh, as you pointed out yourself, there is quite a bit of work to be done, you know, uh, for it to look good. Um, and that's always the goal, you know. Uh, how you and your team feeling? How positive things are around Cyberpunk now? Well, I mean, uh, uh, Satana 22, it definitely feels different, you know. I tell you that. Uh, like, I, I think, like, we got used so much to the toxicity uh, that it fucking feels strange, you know. Uh, like, uh, do you guys... I don't know if you guys play League of Legends, uh, but there's this character, uh, you know, with the, that is carrying, like, the fucking tank of toxins toxins on his back you know and is like swallowing uh, swallowing all the toxin all the time anyway so it's so kind of uh th this is this is how it kind of felt for the past two years um and uh, yes i see the singed fans on the chat so anyway so so imagine being this so uh i i kind of feel like singed disconnected from a fucking tank you know uh, that's how it feels and uh, uh, or yeah, Bane, uh, yeah, maybe. But but uh, the um, uh, it, it, it definitely is it, it definitely is strange. I would say it, it feels different. You know, B believe me. Like I started in the studio like what 11 years uh, almost um, ago, and um, the thing is like I am used to like positivity around the project. I'm used around to hype. You know, I'm used to people actually loving what we did. Right. I remember Witcher 2, Witcher 3 release, I remember expansions, and then uh, Cyberpunk felt quite different in the last two years. So, you know what? I'm really, really happy for all the devs who are with us since that time, you know, or like, let's say, in a span of last three years, because they can actually feel uh, like a bit of a, you know, they, they can actually feel a bit of a, how the sunshine feels, you know? Uh, I, I think, like, I feel that fucking some of us may have felt like like being you know in a, in the trenches in a in a fucking basement dealing during the the shelling you know uh, this is how it felt and uh, it, it's really grateful to just fucking walk out out of the trenches and look at the sun and feel how warm it is you know um, and just bask in that glory for a bit and I'm really happy for the for new devs really um, in the team. And by new, I mean like last three fucking uh, years, you know, where they actually feel, you know, how it feels when you release something that is successful. Uh, so I'm really happy for them, you know, um, because like, like it was difficult for me, but I'm always a guy who's like, I'm always like, imagine like, you know, you, you have like a people, people that are like half full, half empty, right? Like, for me, when the glass is, like, half empty, it's, like, fucking overflowing, right? I'm always so positive that I cannot, like, beat it out of myself in a way. I need to, like, keep myself in check of being, like, no, this is not this positive, Pavo. You you know, it's, it's actually much more negative, you know? And I'm actually really always thinking, like, no, 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 what is the fucking reality, you know? You cannot be this positive. You need to be, like, what is actually, what are actually people thinking? Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that other devs, you know, they can really feel how it is, you know, to release something successful. Sorry, Chums, I'm, I'm seriously so behind. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Slapyard, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, thank you for being here um, on the chat with us. Uh, science fiction person says, how do you guys create uh, such a huge patches with such a small team? I mean, science fiction person, we are not really a small team, right? Like, because like, have in mind that the structure of the team, and we have shown it like officially that uh, it's a, it's like a, the time assignment, right? Like sometimes people work on something for the patch for longer and then they switch between different tasks, you know? Uh, so it's not that we have a very small team all the time on the patch. Like that team shifts in size depending on the problem that we have to tackle and so on. We are pretty agile, um, I dare to say, um, nowadays. Um, uh, you know, a production pun uh, definitely intended. We are quite agile nowadays, you know, when it comes to like shifting resources when needed uh, to like address things and so on and prepare things for you. Uh, 
Okay, uh, oh yeah, Kogito, Kogito right, really so unfair, do you have the name of the mod asking for a friend? Sorry, I know Kogito, that, that's the question from like four weeks ago, uh, I'm so behind in the chat. Yeah, that was regarding the, that was regarding the road trace. I don't know, if you go to Nexus mod, it was one of the more popular, because like, uh, you know, uh, pe pe people, people... Uh, Bask, uh, people say that they can beat, you know, Elden, Elden Ring with a dance mat, but they can't beat the road race without cheating. Anyhow, mm, uh, <laughs> I'm just, uh, but anyway, I, I, I am so happy to see you. I am so happy to see you, uh, my dears. Um, okay, I am, I'm, I'm seriously going like need to, need to scroll basically back to, back to the last questions. FF zero FF. Wait, F7, F20 related to FF06 B5, Punky Wizard S. I mean, so I have to tell you guys that FF06 B5 subreddit is like one of the most enjoyable fucking reddits that probably ever existed. That is as much as I can tell you. It's, it's probably like one of the most enjoyable reddits that I've ever seen. Like seriously, like you guys are so insane. I love that shit. Like, actually, like, like, um, now I'm not talking about FF06B5. Okay, just to be clear, not to give any hints. When, when working at anything new, I'll fucking make sure to crank the difficulty to the maximum, you know? Uh, by the way, um, just to be, just to be sure, <laughs> you know, like regarding stuff like that. Uh, what subreddit? The FF06B5 subreddit. Uh, B <clears throat> Batman Pro One Two Three. Uh, that was the uh, that was the subreddit I, I'm referring to. Crucifix asks, are uh, are they even close? Well, I mean, uh, I cannot give any hints. So I don't know. Are are they? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Did they crack it? Who knows? Uh, Kinos uh, Kinos alive. Uh, says will we ever get any more content similar to edge runners either more from trigger or other studios i mean my friend like uh, first of all uh, because you were first speaker on the chat uh, nice that you were with us as you maybe know or maybe not i cannot speak about future content here i can talk about past content i can talk about intentions and stuff that we did and why and you know explain you guys stuff and we can discuss things because why not uh but <clears throat> i don't want to speak about any future content one thing I can say is like, we are doing fucking everything to make you proud. I actually tweeted it like, I think last time or something, because like, I love the support uh, that we are getting and everything that you guys are doing. Uh, and you know, the game is very much alive. Um, and I, I really, I'm really, really grateful for that. And I want to make you proud. I really want to make you proud. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel, you know why, why I want to make you proud? I want to make you proud so that you can be like, you know, so that when you're on Reddit, when you're on Twitter, when you're on forums or fucking anywhere, even talking to your friends in person, um, you can be proud to say, I knew those motherfuckers gonna deliver, deliver something valuable and they are not dead, you know? And it's not that everyone left and there's no fucking creative juices and they're all fucking grandpas left uh, that can't do shit, you know? I trust in them, I believe in them, I'm proud that I've been supporting them, you know? And I want to give you, like, fucking ammunition. Um, you know what I mean? So that when you go, when you go on Twitter, Reddit, forums, meeting your friends, you're fucking loaded, you know? Like HIMARS, uh, uh, with, the, with the ammunition. And you're able to bring up so many fucking examples. You know what I mean? That's basically, that's basically what I want. <laughs> okay, um, there's a question why Edron is so good. I mean, I, I, I don't know my friend, uh, like I am not uh, specialized in like analyzing anime. It's a very properly done uh, storytelling. The, the characters are written really well. Uh, they're also really well designed. Um, I think that the team that was on it, both on the side of Trigger and on the side of uh, uh, the project, uh, were like really, really strong people. You know, like I don't know if you recognize the names in the credits, but if you if you don't, just Google them, and you will know what I mean, right? Like this is the reason why uh, Edrunners is so 
why Edgeners is good because like seriously there's been so much there's been like so much really so many really strong people on that topic so naturally uh naturally this is gonna be a, a banging a banging product you know <laughs> it's actually interesting that that <laughs> sorry well uh, uh camille cesaro asks lucy or rebecca oh god i don't know uh, i don't know uh, like i guess lucy because she's blonde is lucy blonde i think she's blonde she's white actually but yeah i guess so you know wink wink to my dear sapphire um yeah um Karak says, I'm sure you guys are working hard. The problem is not enough people work on the project. Maybe the game is finished in two or three more years. Well, I mean, my friend, I don't think that we have a shortage of people, really. I don't think that's the issue. Like, the um, uh, the, the thing is that um, what you want to have as a, like, I would say, manager, director, is a team that is mature enough, uh, senior enough, experienced enough, um to tackle the topics and you want to balance like experience versus amount of people so you don't want to have like fucking hundreds of thousands of people on a project in most cases in most cases why because it's extremely hard to be on the same page and really like deliver something meaningful and valuable you know there is a reason why indie games that are like delivered by six people teams uh, look at the giant bomb right like at the guys that the hades um uh, uh, a transistor, base, bastion, pyre, right? There's a reason why there's six people that are able to deliver something so good. Because they're really, really easily on the same page. It's six people who are very senior, very experienced, really well gelled together. Uh, and they can produce something much better, uh, you know, than probably teams that are even bigger. So this is what you really want to balance, right? So I do not essentially think that having like like, I don't know, like, just fucking mass of people, you know, uh, it, it, it is the way to go, like, there are situations uh, where we're literally, like, fucking, you know, Zerg swarming, uh, like, the topic uh, helps out, you know, and, and just going in, like, I don't know, when you're making assets or something, you know, maybe that, but, but it's also, like, we need, you need to be on the same page, you know, you need to have um, mature enough leadership, uh, leads, directors, coordinators, uh, people who are actually like mentoring others and making sure that they deliver something that is like, uh, you, that they are on the same page, you know what I mean? So I'm not really sure if actually like having fucking millions of people on a project is a solution. It's not really. Like, I, I think what you want to have is a very good ex experienced team that gel together well with, I would say, decisive but experienced and humble leadership uh, on it that can really listen to the team when shit is going wild um, and be like, okay, yeah, this is clearly like not, you know, what we what we should be doing um, to really like deliver something good. So anyhow, uh, my friend, I, I don't think that 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 it's that bad. And when you said, you know, the game is gonna be finished in two, three, uh, three years, I mean, we, you guys saw the teaser of uh, Phantom Liberty. I hope that it's being released in 2023 right so that's not two three years according to my calendar it's it's next year right so um i hope that it it clarifies it slightly uh sorry my dears i'm so fucking behind in, in that in that chat <laughs> drenchy said we need achievement for killing smasher with guts gun oh, that's a cool idea here's an interesting idea actually do you guys by the way like the uh the kick uh, fucking uh, gods does like i really like the work that our um uh, i really like the work that our gameplay team is doing on on those weapons uh, i hope that the update in 1.6 you could taste it you know uh there uh, actually <laughs> Kogito said, Pav, what did you what did you do Pavo in italy fiery Pavo is fun to watch i mean well you know there's a bunch of things like i i had you know some rest of course but i had a lot of pasta I had a lot of pasta. Maybe this is what pasta does to me. Anyway, I'm just I'm just hyping and happy, I guess. Um, 
Where did the idea of Skippy come from? Gums Wizard asks. Oh god. My friend, I, I really don't remember exactly. So the quest was done and designed by Danish Markevich. Danish is uh, my expert quest designer in the quest team. Um, and uh, Danish uh, came up with the idea when we were like drafting the um, proposals, the pitches for the uh, quests for the cyberpunk. Uh, long time ago, really, like that was um, uh, th that was long, long, long time ago uh, during the production of Sp Cyberpunk, and like, uh, like I think what what Danish really wanted to do is like continue in a way the tradition of the uh, you know magical speaking weapons, kind of, you know. So it, it, it was a it was a known trope uh, already in the fantasy, you know, science fiction genre. You have like at least five or six talking weapons in the various uh, games. Um, uh, that I'm aware of and just Danish wanted to really prepare his own like kind of spin on that uh, but really do it in, with a, with this clear like cyberpunk flair so that you have this gun with very clear like a personality and that was the that was the thing that Danish really wanted to do uh, and I think I, th I think he quite nailed it like I think the artists and, and I'm really sorry but I don't remember the person who designed original Skippy like the um the actual bullet that is animating i think it was there was were people that are members of our uh ui uh design team uh ui artists um who designed him like the way the way he moves and so on but uh that's pretty much uh, how it went and 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 just kind of like the difference that we wanted to do here is is like show this keepy with some kind of a visual, you know, so that you can actually see him, you know. Uh, there was also, like, I think our Edge Runners account yesterday or today, sorry if I'm confusing the dates, um, when they have, when they have, like, um, uh, tweeted this, like, um, Sorry, my brain is lagging right now. Uh, they, they they have tweeted like the uh, picture of David with the Skippy in hand and so on. So uh, it was actually pretty funny uh, idea to have him there. Um... <laughs> Ditari the Root Heimer's expansion confirmed. Oh God, you guys are, you guys are sick. Uh, Machiavelli said Patrick Mills was there as a lore designer. Yes, exactly. Pat Patrick Patrick had uh, a similar role to kind of mine be because basically Patrick Patrick has an, uh, had an advisory role, but his role was primarily on the lore. I was more um, helping out with things connected to the cohesiveness with the game. Uh, but uh, again, you know, Patrick did like you know shit ton of. Uh, like it was shit ton of times when he when uh, he was you know consulted regarding like various topics uh, for uh, the um, edge runners. Therefore, he's in the credit. My role was very tiny in co in comparison. Um, do you have the favorite scene from edge runners? Oh God, I mean, there's many of them, but like the one scene that was actually added like later during the production of um, of Edge Runners because it was needed from the pacing uh, reasons and also to build better relationship between David and Lucy is the one when she saves him from the from the fucking meat wagon you know the moment when Lucy is riding on that like stretchers you know across that fucking street it's actually a a, a scene that I used to make a gift for the tweet uh, regarding the stream, right? I put the scene exactly from, uh, put the tweet exactly from that scene. It's it's interesting, you know, because it, it shows you sort of like glimpses into the process, right? That, um, like, the creators, in this case, I think it was Bartek Stebor, our writer for our comic books and anime, um, and, um, and Rafał, they realized that there is a um, need for very clear um, moment uh, where Lucy and David are together and then there is this moment of building relationship so they came up with that scene and it's really interesting because like this shows you how to do uh, very properly the exposition you know and you know again exposition is something really hated by uh, the storytellers because like very often we kind of feel as storytellers you know writers uh, that we have to like kind of like shovel things in um, 
uh, you know, into the into the game or your story you know, to really explain something and so on, so, so your audience like understands it. And here, you know, you have this concept of like, oh yeah, you know, they were like, they actually saw the cyberware that David has, and they were like, let yeah, we'll fucking like end him right now, not save him, not not save him, we'll just end him right now and just sell him. Uh, and it just like gives you a glimpse into the lore as well while in the same time being an action scene and you know giving a chance of lucy to do something you know to actually like uh in a way save um david and then show them like kind of closer together anyway it was a crazy fun uh scene so as you can see like when you're designing things like this you can actually like do it in a way that you have like multiple objectives you know achieved i mean in a proper storytelling especially in like movies uh, so like animes as well, of course, you know, or cartoons as well. Uh, in games, mostly as well, like it is the proper way. Like if your scene is doing only one thing, in most cases, it's not correctly done and i'm not talking about talking about multiple topics that's not what i'm trying to say uh, in most cases when when you're like building a scene you need to stay on the topic and do it about something right like go and like not go all over the place and and you cannot have it about too many things oh camille by the way uh, i think you'll recognize this tune uh by the way uh camille really likes outsider no more so something for you um so, so like that's why the scene is good because it just is it just is on the, you know, uh, it just does multiple different, like, things, you know, and achieves multiple different, um, uh, different objectives. Um, okay, uh, my dears, uh, let me actually go in, go in, uh, and check, check the chat, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, someone found Lucy's apartment in the game, at least it's a location, it's crazy to me. It is, my friend. Uh, did CDPR wrote the dialogue in Edgerners? Miho asks. Miho, so it, it is slightly more complicated. It is like this, that Bartosz Tibor wrote the story for it, you know, in the, in the screenplay, and there he cooperated with the side, with the writers on the side of Trigger, which, forgive me, but I will not try to pronounce the name uh, of the person. You can see uh, the, uh, I think it was two people, um, them in the credits. Uh, and this is how that cooperation went, you know? Uh, so the answer is kinda. <laughs> the answer is kinda. Basically, it happened in between, you know, uh, Misha. So yeah, I, 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 the the thing is like when you're writing dialogues for, um, at least the, you know, medium I have experience with, which is you know a bit of a comic books, a bit of a, uh, you know, movies and uh, anime and and games. It's always like multiple people actually taking care of it. It's rarely like one person sits down and writes everything it happens of course you know it's it's often you know that you have at least like one person that is like kind of holding shit together but you have at least people that are doing the proofreading you know um that are just going over the dialogue make sure that you know everything's cohesive it's also difficult to really like um you know write like the same character in different episodes uh you know that they are like sounding the same like, I think I've spoken about it in the previous streams that uh, you have something that we call an uh, idiolect. Uh, maybe some of you heard about it. Like, idiolect is your personal language, personal your personalized way how you speak. So, basically, the words that you use, uh, the phrases that you like, you know, um, the way you like phrasing your thoughts and so on. So, this is something that is your part of your idiolect. And that, basically, idiolect needs to be cohesive for all the characters across all the, like, you know, across all the quests, uh, all the pieces of the series, all the movies, and all the, you know, pieces of the anime and stuff. So, normally, you have people who are, like, doing the proofreading and they're, like, catching and seeing those things, you know. But how specifically, like, you know, like, line by line that happened for anime, uh, I really don't know as I wasn't working on the anime uh, myself, but I expect it to happen in between as uh, as always really mm. What about the new game plus will you release it along with the DLC? Pay the VR my WR my friend I cannot talk about any future content, but my friend I know you guys want it I know you guys want it. I've seen it so much. Like, you know how it is? I literally fucking go to sleep, wake up, and I see New Game Plus. I look to the fridge, I see New Game Plus. You know, I open Twitter, I see New Game Plus, you know? 
I order food, uh, there's New Game Plus in it, you know? It literally, like, I see New Game Plus questions everywhere. So, I absolutely know you guys want it. Um, and I think the whole team, uh, gameplay team, is absolutely fucking aware, you know? Uh, like, uh, like uh, soon I'll get uh, the, the, new, the New Game Plus tattoo. Uh, because I'm really, get, I'm, I'm, I'm really starting to like it. Um, uh, but anyway, um, and uh, I, I'm not trying to be de deceiving. I don't know, condescending maybe with what I'm trying to with what I was saying right now because your questions absolutely make sense, uh, payday. Uh, just I, I cannot really speak, uh, tell you you know much more about the uh, topic. Becca or riot? Interesting uh, question, uh, my friend. Um, oh God, <laughs> okay. Every single game can always have more do something better. Absolutely, Mr. Implicit. Uh, this is basically what we're striving uh, to do. Uh, I hope so, at least. Pavo, should I wait for The Witcher 3 Next Gen upgrade or should I buy it now? I mean, what do you mean should you buy it? Like, uh, uh, upgrade is gonna be free, right? Like, when you have it. So, like, sure, you can buy it whenever you want. Uh, Sonic to seater like I think like the way to go about it is like just fucking go and uh, uh, j j Just go and look when it's like on some kind of sale and so on like there are sales from time to time I think um, on 20th anniversary there was a sale of all the you know games you could got the, you could get the the Witcher 3 um, So just yeah, I I hope that you know uh, you, you can you can buy it uh, at that time. You can look for the sale. It's I don't think it's also like that expensive, but I'm not sure uh, regarding the pri pricing at this point. Uh, Kinosha Life asks a question that may be more suitable. When writing Quest Lines 2077, did you have any interactions with Mike Pondsmith? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Kinosha Life. Like uh, I talked about it in the previous streams um, quite a bit, that Mike Wiss is our consultant uh, on the lore side specifically. We are trying to stay on the same page regarding the development of Cyberpunk in general. Uh, and uh, we have often, uh, well, often like, it depends really on the, on the time, you know, sometimes it's every couple of weeks, sometimes it's every couple of months, uh, sometimes it's even more often, so it really depends, you know, sometimes Mike comes in in person, like I even tweeted at some point a picture with Mike and all his crew, you know, uh, because we had a cool conversation about the, some topics um, uh, that I'm not going to talk about right now, uh, that YouTubes, that YouTubes uh, shouldn't know about, but uh, we... <laughs> We talked about, you know, about some cool stuff. So absolutely, like, we've been uh, talking with Mike about things. Now, when it comes to, like, designing things for the game, so I'm talking about storylines and characters, this is always our work. Like, this is the work of our designers, our writers, you know, who are doing those things, designing those things. But, you know, of, of course, you know, we do, like, try to stay on the same page. You know, sometimes we converse about, like, various topics. Like, if we are, like, not sure what to do something... Uh, you know, uh, with with a certain topic, or for instance, if Mike has an idea where he wants to like develop certain thing, sorry, in what way Mike wants to develop, you know, uh, a certain topics in the lore, uh, especially for Cyberpunk Red, uh, you know, so his uh, tabletop uh, uh, new like edition of of Cyberpunk uh, game, we we do talk, right? Like to just make sure we're on the same page. Uh, it also just makes it better, you know, because we we got like inspired you know from each other like I, I i had the pleasure to had at least few uh conversations and meetings with mike uh during uh, cyberpunk and ep uh, ep1 expansion pack uh production and um it was always it was always very like i would say inspirational is the word it's always very inspirational you know especially when you when you can like discuss with someone who has like great imagination um, interesting, but like not how do you say it? Like original ideas, I would say. It's always it's it's always good, you know, because then you can feel, you know, how well you maybe gel, you know, how you know if, if something is really like catching fire, you know what I mean? Like you just like say, yeah, yeah, I I just want to do this or that, you know, or we are thinking to do this or we did this. What do you think about it? You know, are we fucking mad or uh, does it make any sense? And and you know, um, I think. Uh, 
I think I, I think it's actually pretty awesome cooperation. I'm really enjoying it. I really hope Mike is enjoying it too. You know, uh, really because like I definitely like every single time when I have meetings with with Mike and Telsorian, I'm trying to really like first show my appreciation, uh, but also like. Um, Make sure it's useful for both ways as much as possible, you know, because really like on this cooperation, like both ways are really uh, bl bl blossoming, kind of. Yeah. Hey. Radiance wrote, CDPR should make a smaller budget isometric cyberpunk RPG. There is a market for it. Divinity Wasteland, Disco Elysium are successful games. I mean, it's an interesting idea, like, we, we, we did one game that kinda is like that, which was the Thronebreaker, right? Uh, for uh, the Witcher uh, IP. Um, so it's it's quite uh, like what you said. Uh, I do th feel, though, that we are really, like, primarily more like of a AAA developer. Like, I want to work on, like, big, epic games, you know, uh, that make, like, Fucking everyone excited and sure it it is it is a, a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Because like suddenly, you know Suddenly you guys have the um, you know, s s suddenly I, I need to you know work for it on, for years You know you guys wait and just ask me power. What the fuck is happening? Are you washed off? You know uh, and, and you know, are you going to deliver fucking anything in your life? Um, and <laughs> It's just uh, so it's it's nice, you know, to like make smaller things from time to time. That's why I fucking love so much working in expansions. I told you guys in the past, like working expansions for Witcher Three. I mean, we're, we're, I worked slightly. I mean, a bit on the Witcher Two as well. But uh, expansion for the previous game, I work on, and now Cyberpunk expansion is fucking amazing. I love that. Honestly, um, it's like the most fun I had as a game dev in my whole career. Uh, honestly. Uh, working on expansion is fucking awesome. I love this fucking banging songs. Jesus. Uh, Lunar Proxy asks season two. Uh, I mean, I have nothing to announce. I have nothing to announce, my friend. Uh, as you can probably imagine. Uh, as you can probably imagine. Um, uh, so, uh, no comment regarding season two. Uh, the Del Halid, or Del Halid? The Halid. I'm not sure the Halid, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, my friend, but you guys, you guys are fucking using all the letters in the alphabet uh, to really confuse me. Uh, Pavel, quick question with the numbers from the charts and the recent success. Make the team reconsider the one expansion only plan. I hope it do, cause there's so many potential for upcoming stories. And don't forget New Game Plus, now I want. We really want it. Love you and the team, truly, uh, for all you did and a great job. Proud of you all. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Halit, for uh, your question. Well, I mean, I, I I don't think I have any comment regarding, like, the, the, the core of your question, which is, like, if we, like, reconsidered, you know, uh, anything. Like, as I, as I talked to it about it, like, I think some streams ago, uh, when there was a similar question, like, it's always, like, the best. If you want something more, like you want, like, I don't know, more expansions, whatever, we, we need to see that the game is, like, you know, people are fucking interested, right, in, in the game, right? Like, people are playing it, right? Like, because, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to sound too dramatic, but if we have a fucking kids to feed, you know, and families to feed, um, you know, like, it, there needs to be, like, a market for it, like, like, there needs to be an interest, right, for it, and I, like, do not care for like the money that company does for the slightest, you know, because that's not my motivation at all. Um, but I need to take care of my teams, right? And they need, you know, uh, they need like salaries, they need to fucking live, right? And I need to make sure that whatever we release is successful enough so that they uh, can have a good, um, comfortable, possibly, life, you know, where they can uh, put out the best work and produce the best art for you, you know? So anyway, but simplifying my answer, basically there needs to be a sense for it, you know? Like, if we will see, you know, that there is an interest, you know, who knows what happens. But, you know, again, like there is, uh, I, I don't have much more to add. Like, it's always the best, you know, um, it's, it's always the most important, best way to 
to support it when when um, you know the, the creator when we see that the creation you know the art that we make is liked you know and I'm not talking here about the sales per se I'm also talking about like just the um, you know the sentiment you know between people you know how they speak about the game you know how they speak about us you know uh, do they fucking call us you know liars and then who knows what else um, it's 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 really it's really important you know uh that sentiment uh that we are seeing uh j uh j m h tally wrote i get that as a dad of two great schoolers yeah i i'm glad my friend uh, I go, I'm glad, my friend. Uh, Cyber Vesna wrote, I admire cinematography of Cyberpunk. You guys are amazing. And the work of the teaser was so stunning, giving chills. Yeah, I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that fucking idea uh, for that, uh, for that, for that teaser. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything, um, you know, before you guys start to ask. I'm not going to say anything, uh, but uh, I really liked um, the idea. Uh, in any way of the way it was pulled off it, it looks it looks good it shows some things but not too much um which i think is the best you know because like as a creator we are always you're always like i have so many fucking banging scenes right like in the whatever i'm doing like let it be anime game you know even movie right you're like i have so many fucking banging scenes right or like ideas moments right now if i put it into teaser trailer then it becomes like uh, like major spoiler, you know, a, a reveal and, and it takes away like part of the fun as well. So in a way to encourage people to actually like, you know, engage with whatever you've built, you kind of decrease the, you know, the reward of the, the emotions uh, that your audience is going to um, live through. So it's so important uh, when building like trailer or teaser to really like be very mindful of what you're picking and uh, what scenes you're picking and and what they are exactly showing, um, so that the um, you know um, so that people don't have like maybe wrong idea about like what the hell it is, but also they are not like they don't really know what is exactly going on, but maybe like enough to just spark their interest. You know what I'm trying to say? So. You're just trying to make an equivalent of, like, let's say, moving poster, you know? Rather than fucking, like, spo spoil the story. Um, uh, Cyber Vesna <laughs> wrote, Since you don't ignore me, would you read my highlighted question, pretty please? I'm sorry, Cyber Vesna, but it's, there's so many people on the chat that I just... Uh, I must have skipped the highlighted question. Sorry, I'm scrolling back if the chat uh, allows me to even get to your question. Okay, I see it. Uh, maybe you saw my effort in trying to crack Phantom Liberty teaser. I did. I did. Actually, I was pretty stellar, I have to say, uh, Cyber Vesna. And I came up with a new theory about what we have in-game. Okay. Assuming AI theory is right, uh, what if Hanako would come to Night City no matter what? Parade was meant to happen with Osabrook's death. She barely leaves Japan and then comes to place like Night City, she could know there is something important in Night City as a Netrunner wanted to investigate, but closer to the source. That's why she stopped Saburo from nuking Night City. I mean, I can, I can tell you one thing. You guys are fucking wild with those theories. Uh, some of them are quite... Uh, like, some of them are way too wild, and some of, uh, some of them are not wild enough. And that's as much as I will tell you, uh, Cyber Vesna. I, I think like it would be best if we can go back to this discussion, you know, post uh, post Phantom Liberty release, so that you can really like we we, we can really you know discuss <laughs> what you uh, what we really uh, what was really going on. Okay, okay, but I'm not saying anything. Confirming anything or denying anything, my chums. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um. Kite glowed louder. I guess that was to think that that was like seven hours ago. Uh, okay, thanks, Kite, uh, for being with us, by the way. 
Zichiro Enigma wrote, hello old, hello everything's having a great day. Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Zahiro Enigma, for being with us. I'm totally butchering your guys' names, don't I? Holy shit. Uh, Camille Cesaro actually asked a really interesting question. Do you think Transmog was the right call for Cyberpunk? Do you not think Style vs. Substance phrase lost meaning? Oh, Camille, do you, you can't imagine how much we talked about that. You know, uh, internally. How much we really talked about that internally. Um, that was really, really, really uh, important topic. And... Um, like you could see that actually like so many people really enjoy the wardrobe we didn't want to really call it like transmog because this is not like magic really like it's more like your kind of clothing sets um in a way uh but um that topic is definitely something we discussed really thoroughly uh camille so i i understand completely from where you're coming from and that question makes absolute sense to me um but after very careful deliberation and checking like multiple different i would say avenues we could go with that that was the path that we picked um and i think it was the right call i think it was the right call you know all things considered like i'll keep observing you know how the you know so-called uh, the clown meta is uh, developing because um you know i've seen you motherfucker posting po po posting uh, posting like pictures of like uh, you know dudes in like dresses and like skirts and stuff that have the biggest uh, biggest armor and stuff so uh, you know and calling it clown meta so I will see how clown meta is developing you know after the transmog uh, slash wardrobe uh, to know basically you know if we have achieved what we really wanted to I'm really curious you know um, I'm really really curious bozo gang as Kellad wrote yeah of course <laughs> seven hours ago yeah camille i'm so fucking behind i'm just like oh david uh, uh, dummy asks are we gonna play the game today yes we are uh we are gonna play the game uh, uh i i'm just like you know having his usual having his usual, usual chat with the chat um uh, but we will jump to the game definitely Uranium Bullet. I know it wasn't yours or any other Red Department's decision, but super disappointed. Phantom Liberty is the only expansion. Why does Witcher 3 get more love than Cyberpunk? I hope this decision changes in the future. I mean, <laughs> Uranium Bullet, not much I can add here. You know, my friend. Not, not really, like, my heart is with you. That's as much as I can tell you, you know, my friend. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a very, it, it, as you can imagine, that that kind of those kind of decisions are, like, not taken by you know even directors, right? Like, uh, like we, I mean, talking about directors right now, uh, like we are of course you know giving our recommendation and so on, but this is the, the the board, you know, game director, like the key people really in the company making like such a key decisions, um, not um, uh, any of us and. You know, like, as, as I said, like, the love shown to the game is always the best way, really, um, to to show that you would want more of a given, uh, in a given world, RIP, and, and so on, you know. But, a again, I don't want to repeat myself. Thank you for adding Trasmoke Word, uh, Sylvania Road, thank you. I'm glad you, you like it. Um... um uh, Revolvo Salota was I really want to stay at your home house a creative for with edge runners in mind or did the creators choose the song for the game with the series uh, at a later stage of work I don't know revolver the thing is those things were kind of happening simultaneously so um, you know uh, all the discussions and so on regarding the anime and uh, the creation of the music uh, but I really don't know what was first in a way I suspect that there is quite of a bit of an overlap because of course our um, main composer our uh, director of composing Marcin Przybułowicz has been um, involved in that uh, so as you can imagine uh, there could prop there there has been probably quite a bit of an overlap uh, but I do not know the answer like direct answer to your question so don't want to m mislead you. Uh, 
So could have been accident, could have been accidental, but also could have been intentional. Uh, definitely the choice, like to put it like in the anime and have it there, is intentional, you know, because of uh, you know the feelings we wanted uh, we wanted to create. Hello, VP Valentinas, great to have you with us. Lexicon wrote, hi Pavo and everyone, what a great week for Cyberpunk with a great 1.6 update, Edgerunner's anime and a teaser trailer for the DLC, keep up the great work all you chooms, uh, thank you so much Lexicon, I really appreciate uh, your, your nice words. Machiavelli wrote, I don't want to wear skirts because it was higher armor than a literal military pant, Transmog made the game way better. Uh, I'm glad you think so, uh, Machiavelli. So we know there was a vote as to whatever or not to approve Becca's uh, being in Edgerunners. Please tell us to wear on the right side of the history tomb. Oh, as you wear on the right tomb. Oh, um, uh, Tilt Tide Crow. Tilt Tide Crow, uh, I, am, I haven't been sadly uh, taken into account on that vote. That was a vote in between of the core creation team of the anime. And I'm not a creator of the anime, uh, my friend. You know, as I mentioned, like, I was only consulted regarding the things, how to make things cohesive in the anime with the game. Um, but that is my whole input, unfortunately. I, I would honestly love to fucking work on it, by the way. Um, seeing now how it fucking turned out. But I'm really happy for my colleagues. Like, I mean, it has a fucking badass team on it. Like, seriously, like, you know, looking at the names and the credits, you can probably understand why it turned out as it did uh but yeah <laughs> so again like i assume that you know the team had a creative uh how to say it uh, uh conflict you know and they discussed things um you know how to uh, resolve it uh and they picked the best for the the anime uh, at the time which was to keep the you know uh make rebecca or becca stay uh, what about cyber psychosis topic edge runners? Uh, did you ever think of including something like this in the game? For example, when using too much of the cyberware, for example, of course penguin gamer uh, We did think about it like there's also a reason why this in anime uh, Like we kind of from quite long time ago uh, Knew that this will be a topic that will be explored um, in the uh, in the anime if I'm a if I'm right, I was like from very, very early stages of the work on the anime. So that was like in a way conscious. The thing is that um, in uh, the game, we have tried to like touch that topic in multiple different avenues. For instance, you have the whole storyline with uh, Cyber Psychos and um, Regina Jones uh, that we are touching in the game, but not much more, right? Um, the reason for that being you cannot really like you cannot really put into the game everything, right? Like, it's just literally virtually impossible. You know, it, it's like, it's the same thing as, as working on Witcher 3, right? We, we, we couldn't put all the topics from Witcher 2 and Witcher 3 into Witcher 1, right? And make it like, make like the Witcher 1 include everything from all the lore, you know, that was ever mentioned, you know, in the Witcher in, in one game. It's just like quite difficult really to, to, um, it's just quite difficult really to to handle like the the lore in um cyberpunk is actually so rich and so varied there's actually so many um things you know happening there that it's just virtually impossible to just give enough space to everything you know and uh at the end of the day it's more like a universal right you know when you're making something in any ip you need to focus on something right you need to have like points of focus and things that are like a bit on a side, you know, it, there, there's no really way of like you doing your, um, you know, product, let's call it, even though I fucking hate that word, but I'm here referring to games, movies, books, even, you cannot make it about like fucking everything, right? It needs to be focused on something. So uh, that is the, that is the answer to your question. There had to be something that is in the center and there had to be things that are slightly on a side. Um... Alliterate asks, by the time you and the team made the decision to get rid of the third-person cutscenes, where many made did you guys use mockups? 
um, Elliterate, the decision about the uh, about going first person was made really, really, really long time ago. So uh, the third person was used only specifically in only specific moments, and we were a little more like searching. Okay, you know what is the right way to go? And at that time, you know, it was uh, the call of our cinematic director Igor Sajinsky to actually completely go third person and and get rid of the the third person those single scenes that we had so it was just a few um just because it felt proper and you know there was a lot of dispute there was a lot of discussion between us you know how we should do it like properly you know if it's the right way to go or not and so on but uh, like at the end of the day you are making your own calls and decisions as a person as a director like and nobody's like telling me hey pavo you know you need to make quests differently or like now when i'm directing open world as well nobody's telling me hey pavo you need to do open world differently like we are trusting each other right so when um we were when when uh, the decision was made like or like that on the side of the cinematic team igor's side you know, uh, we took it with an understanding, okay, this is a better thing for the game. Of course, we had we had a lot of creative discussions, conversations about the topic. Should that be like this or not? And, and ultimately, I quite like that decision, to be honest. Like, I wasn't feeling it at the very beginning, but it really grew in me, you know, um, in time. Uh, and uh, second part of your question, did you guys use mocap? I mean, absolutely, of course. We have our own mocap studio built in Warsaw. It's one of the most modern uh, mocap studios in Poland, uh, and one of the most mocap, uh, uh, sorry, most modern mocap studios, like in general in the world, at least at the time when it was built. Um, uh, and we have our separate like mocap team that is uh, specialized in handling mocap in general. We have actors uh, that are specialized in like recording mocap for games uh, who are doing stunt work, stunt work, um, stunt work, sorry. Uh, for instance, Maciej, Wisniewski, uh, Maciej Kwiatkowski, sorry, Maciej Kwiatkowski. I don't know if you know him, he's a pretty famous uh, Polish stuntman. Uh, he is the guy who was uh, always mocapped to use combat animations for Geralt, but he was also, you know, used for mocap for lots of things uh, in Cyberpunk. As far as I'm aware, uh, Mat uh, he's a very, very experienced, like, stuntman. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and some recordings, actually, from stunt sessions are... are uh, are incredibly interesting, I would say. Um, Zero Night Loot new gig with the tiny mic is much high, much higher quality than all gigs in the game. Hope all new gigs in the expansion will be like that or better. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Zero Night. That is uh, also my objective. I'm trying to make sure that you know what we deliver is is a proper quality, and you guys can be proud. Um, of, of the game and you can be proud of really of of what we made um the thing is also like that um you know the the open world team is is growing really well like i am so proud of the guys uh guys and and the girl uh, in the team uh and i am so happy with like you know the work they are doing um there was like there was there was tremendous progress uh done um, you know, the way how the team develops, but also like, you know, the knowledge, but also understanding, also openness, uh, like uh, so much, actually, so many good things. But, you know, for you guys, like you don't really see it, right? Because you see the the game, right? Like you can see those gigs and be like, oh, okay, I see that, you know, things are better or are not, you know, that you're free to judge the way you, you, you feel like it. You know, I'm going to take anything you, you know, any judgment you throw at me. But, you know, you, you can see the result, right? So, uh, outside of the, 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 the gigs you just saw, you know, there's also, you know... Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I started laughing because Kaitek wrote... I was not here for some time and wondering did Pavel leave the Nomad Garage scene already? <laughs> Kaitek, no! I was actually talking about why that scene is not in fourth person. <laughs> Guy that coming here fucking throwing some uh, coal into the fire. Um, anyway, um... <laughs> oh god. Um, 
Thank you for sharing your time with us, Love Palo Road. You help uh, put a face on game developers. Wish more devs would also stream and interact with the fans. I mean, there are more, more devs streaming. There is Miles, uh, our acting lead level designer on The Witcher Saga, who's streaming. Uh, if you're interested in, like, uh, you know, art or level design related topics, definitely Miles is a great guy to listen to. You have him in my recommended streamers. You have also um, Ayano Monika. She is our UI producer. Uh, she's uh, streaming Destiny and Horizon. You can also check her in my recommended streamers. Um, they are maybe a bit less talking about cyberpunk in general, uh, of course, you know, uh, and so on, but definitely they are the devs, you know, you can chat with them, go, go, you know, to their to the Twitter, to their Twitch, ask them questions, you know, uh, throw them a follow, you know, greet them from me. I would be really, I would be really thankful because they are, they are amazing. They're doing great work. And, um, you know, there's, they're often like devs hanging out either on Monica's chat, on Miles' chat, on the chat here with us. So I'm really gr grateful that they're here, uh, you know, just sharing time with us. You know, I started streaming because uh, uh, during like almost the biggest shitstorm uh, after the release. And it's been a ride, I, will, I, I can tell you that. And it's been a ride and I really enjoyed it, you know. Um, because I um, enjoy and I really thrive in situations when it's when it's tough, not when, not when it's easy. So uh, it's been it's been really fun. My friends, this is the chat is so fucking stuffed with questions that I'm seriously, uh, completely like, so behind. Kaitek, I totally understand spending three years there. We're in the garage. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, uh, Hag Hagham uh, f uh, wrote on the chat, uh, not really cyberpunk news, but I got news recently that I have an art test at Treyarch tomorrow. You all have helped me a lot, even though I've been lurking to develop myself, so thank you so much. My friend, is Treyarch working uh, on Call of Duty? It is, right? Hey, uh, Chum, Chum, here's an idea. Here's an idea. When you will, when you will get a job there, when you get a job there, first tell him, you know, that they're going good, good job. That's the first thing. Then tell him that we need some fucking awesome, like cyberpunk cameo in in, in the new COD. Just just talk to them. You know, tell them that you know we had a we had a quick chat and um, you know uh, there is an idea. Here you go. You know. Anyway, I, I wish you, I wish you, my friend, all the best uh, with the test. Seriously, like, it's always, it's always so awesome when I see you guys grow. Um, and uh, I wish you, wish you good luck, my friend. Uh, Zebsdi, Jesus Christ, thank you so much for gifting the subs. I just realized I'm, of course, uh, so fucking slow. Um, I'm so behind. Uh, Nuremind wrote, I prefer more open world systems and repeatable quests than New Game Plus. It will be a better use of dev time in my opinion. Hmm, interesting question. You're, I think, the first person that says that you, that you prefer something else, but not New Game Plus. So, interesting. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> You're like maybe one versus a billion, but hey, you know. It's like there's always, you know, you always need a strong leader or a starter of a trend before it becomes a trend, you know? Oh, here you go, there's another person. It's like, it's two versus a million. Hey, you know, I, I think uh, he got my back. Oh, cool, there's three already. Holy shit, this is already an avalanche. Um, Uh, Kaitek wrote a first-person perspective scenes were a big change for cinematics team and for other teams as well But we truly believe it fits the story for the game. It was a right call. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree with you Kaitek. Uh, I completely with you uh, agree with you. It was a huge change It's so difficult to make good first-person perspective scenes But I am sure that actually um Thanks to that and thanks to all that experience, you know, we'll be actually, you know, better uh, with whatever we will build next with all, all this experience, you know. Uh, Danku, Danku123 asks, will the remote DLC add a new course, for example? Are you planning to add a car modification system? My friend, I cannot to speak about future content, my friend. 
cannot. I'm sorry. I mentioned it already like uh, something like 628 times um, or 29, uh, if I'm not sure, if I'm not correct. Danko, thank you so much for being here and for asking question. I cannot talk about future content, but I know you guys want it. Okay. Thank you for pointing it out. Uh, controller Leaf. Thank you for the prime, my friend. Oh, God. Kogito gifted the subs. Thank you so much, Kogito. I'm scrolling the chat backwards now. Uh, I'm so, I'm so behind. Um, any possibility of adding Netronic bodysuits like Lucy's, please? G. Huha to, uh, 2058 asks. Interesting topic to think of. Thank you. Uh, thank you for throwing it my way. Uh, Mikus wrote, I gonna buy and play Cyberpunk at least. That's cool, my friend. Uh, I hope uh, you're gonna have a great time. You need to definitely play uh, with the dildo build. I really, I really encourage you to try it. It's, it's fucking fantastic. If not, you're, you're missing out on like the, uh, uh, like the, the, you know, the, the quiet OP um, in the game. Uh, Misho asks, Pavel, are you going to add new tools in Cyberware for us? Stealth and hacker players. So far in the gun blazing people got new stuff. Good question. Good question. I mean, Misho, this is something uh, we've be, we are definitely aware of. Uh, I would say, you know, um, like um, nowadays also like thanks to Gabe's involvement. Uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe Amatangelo is a uh, Gabe director of Cyberpunk. Um, thanks to Gabe's, Gabe's involvement, I also so so much closer to the gameplay team. Um, and I know we are very much aware of the topic. I hope a red mod takes off and it will be the tool for the new stuff. Oh, dude, I seen I seen some um, stats. Fucking looks insane. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, really, like we we do uh, um, like we do, we do have really big like big big hopes. I I, I think the uh, modding team uh, did a fantastic job on building the red mod. Um, and they really like they really wanted to provide you with like the best stuff they could and I know it um, I've seen them. I, I talked to them. They're really good good guys um, So I really hope you will you you know enjoy and and like really put it in good use, you know I, I, I seriously want to see that um, you know schlongs of sky uh, of cyberpunk um, Finally released like done properly with like proper modding tools, you know Oh God a Rite of Passage is playing. Anyway, uh, you guys know that I'm waiting for Schlogs of Cyberpunk. Uh, you're fucking slacking off, though. Uh, we are giving you tools and there's nothing happening. Uh, serious disappointment. Anyway. Um, Uh, Drelovs wrote, I was wondering if you guys could add accessibility settings in Cyberpunk to remove flashes. My friend really wants to try Cyberpunk, but they can handle flashes very well. Very interesting question, uh, comment, Drelovs. Uh, thank you for pointing it out uh, to me. Uh, that, that's, that's why those streams are actually really useful and educational for me, you know? Because I can listen to you guys when you talk about stuff like that and make me aware, you know? Uh, about stuff and uh, I'm really grateful you know for you pointing things out <laughs> Shraf 2k wrote I just spoke to your mom and she said she's very proud for you finishing your homework game and all but she wants grandbabies already her words not mine chop chop okay <laughs> thanks Shraf 2k uh, for this comment. Uh, Machiavelli, I'm happy Keanu's back. I hope you guys record him by Johnny saying his real name time to time, like goodbye Vincent, never stop fighting. Also hope to Morgan Black and returns. Uh, of course, uh, of course you help. Of course you hope for it, Machiavelli. Of course you do. Uh, but you know what? I at least I'm, a, I'm grateful you guys are fucking consistent, you know, because I see your nickname and I literally know that what you want. You know, I know Machiavelli, you want badass action. You want uh, Morgan Blackhand, you know, uh, saying his name, you know. So I know Shraft2K wants more um, FF06B5. 
I know uh, Vesna wants more Hanako no matter what. And uh, Smasher's wife wants more Smasher, just smashing. And uh, Valerie Silverhand wants just more si Silverhand. And Pinky Julian uh, just wants more Mitch. You know, just more Mitch, that would be enough, that would be fine. And uh, Camille Cesaro just wants more Panem. And V. Uradine wants just more, more carry. Am I off? I, am I off, uh, my chimps, with my assessment? Tell me, tell me. Or do I fucking know you? Illusiard wants more Sneebles. Uh, um, uh, uh, you chimps? Oh, Bugbear wants more, more, more Bugbear. Um, uh, Grindera wants more Bugbear, of course. You know. Uh, Kira wants more Oda. Fucking, you know, that's, that's so simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I, 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 I get you. I get you. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, it's. Uh, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. You guys really, uh, you, you, you like the game uh, and you played. Uh, Fiance DLC. Exit to the next level. Okay. And what do you do with uh, Fiance DLC? Like talk to the. Uh, House Teshchova, my friends. I forgot. Mother-in-law. Uh, you talk to mother-in-law. Basically, that's that's pretty much the the the, the whole fiance DLC. That's, that's how it works. You argue? Yeah, exactly. It's just like the the, the, the whole expansion is like fucking like really lengthy scenes of just discussions, you know? And then you try to lose weight, you know? You like clean up your apartment, you know? You clean, you know, you dress better, you know? Take care of your teeth, your hair, you know, your skin, you know? Get better job. That that sounds like a fantastic idea for a for a for a for a uh, uh, you know a fiance expansion. Like we could f we should fucking design those things together, my my chums. You know, I'm just like literally uh, I'm I'm literally losing time just uh, sitting sitting in work and just like thinking rather than you know I can just ask you chums and just like write those fucking things down. You know. I'm 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 glad you like the fiance. Uh, Fiance DLC, yes. Uh, hey, Pavo, do you answer my question? Uh, George1173 one, uh, wrote, George, I'm sorry, my friend, but seriously, the the chat is so fucking wild. I'm trying to find you. Um, but I, I seriously... Could you, like, just simply paste your question once again? There's almost no limitations in the chat. You can just paste it. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm, you know... I'm I'm really doing my best uh, seriously to answer, but it's it's far from easy. I would say. Uh, Judo sable, Jedu sable. I, I I don't know. I really don't un, don't understand this. Nick, do you think that in the future you will make squad based cyberpunk game, or what's your point of view of companions? Even though Johnny's kind of our buddy, I loved some parts with T-Buck, Jackie, or Johnny parts with Rogue, Spider, Murphy, Shaitan. Um, yeah, so it's basically a question about the companion system. Um, I mean, good, good, good question. I'm, I'm not really... Like, looking at everything that Cyberpunk needs or would benefit from, I'm not really sure if this is really, like, the, like, the most useful thing we could work on. Uh, however, you are asking not directly about ask, adding it to Cyberpunk, but just thinking about m an another squad-based Cyberpunk game. I mean, who knows what the future brings, you know, uh, my friend. Um, that's that's what I can tell you. Like, I, I, I can't talk much about the future content. Like, I, I'm definitely interested in working on all kinds of games, you know. Um, Pablo wrote, people just want more Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, I'm glad, Pablo. Uh, that's that's good, I guess, you know. That's uh, completely by coincidence. That's exactly what I'm working on, you know, uh, with fucking loads of other people and fantastic and talented team. So, you know, Pablo, we might be onto something, actually. Uh, that's, that's good. Um... Uh, Penguin Gamer, as a team leader, um, do uh, as a team leader of a quest team, do you give your team most of the time when something's going wrong, or also when they deliver something great? Um, I'm sorry, but I'm really, really. And how is CDPR getting feed, and how do you deal with it, Penguin Gamer? I'm quite, quite. I have quite trouble with figuring out what the question exactly is. Like. Uh, 
like I'm always trying to as a as a director and before as a lead I'm always trying to like show my gratitude to the team for everything they've been working on if, if, when it's uh, good to just like show them you know what I appreciate and, and point them out towards that direction but um, when there's also something to figure out I try to point it out what's wrong and at first always give them time to figure it out on their own and then guide them like you know consciously step by step a bit closer and closer and closer mm. And when, you know, after a few tries, I would say we normally, and it applies kind of to me, but it also kind of applies to other uh, directors or leads, uh, just give the solution, you know? So we, we sort of like, as a, as a leads and management and directors, what you're normally trying to do is like, when you're trying to create a team that is able to deliver like remarkable work, you cannot like micromanage people and tell them exactly how to do things. Because if you get people used to that, they will stop developing. They also get used to that. And they will never really strive to really deliver something on their own. They will always ask because it will be easier and faster and simpler. And you really don't want that. Because like as a lead and director, normally it's only a bunch of people, right? And that bunch of people is normally the most, um, I would say, experienced um, I accomplished is probably a bad word uh, here, but usually like experienced people in, in managing and also like transferring the vision and holding that vision uh, and, and making sure that the vision is delivered. And so what you don't, what you really want is develop your teams toward actually understanding that vision and delivering it on their own. Like the absolute best dream fucking scenario is you tell the team roughly what you kind of need to do, what you kind of need to deliver, what's the expectation, and then they sort of are able to do it on their own, you know? And then you sort of check it with them, you know, you play it together, you converse about it, then you play it together, and it's perfect, right? And it's like, and you're like, holy shit, this team totally nailed it, you know? And it happens, you know? It happens. It, it does happen, you know? It doesn't happen always, because that's the ideal scenario, but it does happen, you know? Um, and, and that's always the goal, you know? You you don't want, like, precisely your vision. You kind of want to, like, you know, people to really make, like, achieve that emotion or achieve that vision, but you don't really want them to do exactly the way you want. It. Like, that's the way it works. Like, that's the way to develop people. That's the way to make them, like, the most um, proud of also uh, about their work. That's always um, the best word, the best way, sort of, uh, to go uh, with with uh, things like that. Uh, Ushiro Tsuki asked, "Will we play Cyberpunk tonight?" Absolutely, uh, my friend. Uh, absolutely, I will play. I will just jump to Cyberpunk really in a few minutes. Uh, I think because we are talking much longer uh, than we normally uh, do, and. Um, we should uh, jump back to the game in a really in a second. Um, Magic Pain Glove, uh, thank you so much, Magic Pain Glove, for being with us. Uh, Magic Pain Glove wrote, "I love the game, love the work you and your team have done with the main and side quests in the game, but I have a big problem. I keep running out of enemy to slay. Is there a possibility of a bigger version of combat zone being added to the game and bigger combat areas all around with more enemies?" Interesting question, uh, Magic Pain Glove. I mean, we we do we are aware of this issue. Uh, I think um, in the team and there was like lots of work already done you know to solve many issues that are kind of coinciding that are like similar to the problem that you uh, touched uh, already in the team and especially in the past patches but not this um, directly I can talk about the future content and whatever we will do but um, I wanted to thank you for pointing it out uh, to me, I've seen that mentioned by um, by the players, specifically about the topic. You know that that players mentioned that oh yeah, you know there's no ways for me to actually make money um, in a, in a game anymore. You know and so on. And we need a solution uh, for this. So I would say that as a as a team, especially like my open world team, are very much aware uh, of that problem. 
uh, Nartra wrote, uh, Hey mate, just finished the game for the first time. It was an awesome ride. Loved it. Thank you so much, my friend. Captain Dude. Captain Dude wrote, This is the case for every manager. Jobs A manager who's trying to do everything alongside his people is not a good manager. Good point, Captain Dude. Uh, thank you for your comment. LPP Prince. Um... Uh, what you've been saying actually has made me emotional because I can feel the graciousness and love you're feeling for the invigorated lot CDPR and uh, 2077 God due to 1.6 plus the anime. So just want to say thank you for your tum of the teams. Keep on keeping on. Um, thank you. That's exactly uh, that's exactly what we are what we are doing. What we are trying to do. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'm also like kind of invigorated also by the release of the fucking teaser of the phantom liberty i'm so glad that we finally were able to show it to you guys you know how it is when i literally go to twitter you know and and i i go to bathroom and i open my fridge and i see their questions you know hey pavel where's the dlc you know meaning people ask about expansion pavel where's the expansion you know haven't you promised that what the fuck are you doing you know pavel why are you fuffing around you know Instead of just making this expansion that you promised. And I'm like, I'm fucking doing it. I'm doing it. Every single day. With a lot of amazing people, you know, that are trying to do the best work for you. Every single fucking day. So finally, I can be like, hey, Chums, you know, the expansion, the fucking mythical expansion actually has a name. And actually has a teaser already, you know, it fucking exists, you know. You don't have to like trust me when I say that I work for stuff on stuff for you. It's like, it's like so interesting that they like go on Twitch every single week. You know, the, we had a small, small break now, but before I was pretty consistently every single week uh, on a Twitch here talking about the game. Going and every second, every single fucking time I tell you. We work for the content for you, chumps, you know, we work for, uh, you know, for an exp oh, expansion, you know, we work for the patches for you, chumps, you know, and so on. And, and, and people like everywhere are writing, no, they, they gave up on the game like two years ago. And I'm like, yeah, fucking patches made themselves. And they're like so fucking huge. Fridge in the bathroom, yeah, I mean, so I designed my flat myself, so I, I really want to have a, you know, like to have a snack, you know, uh, when I'm having a shower, you know. Have a have a have a bite of a you know a Polish ham uh, when I'm in the shower. So you know, uh, if you if if you want me design your flat, just uh, give me a shout. You know, I'm I'm pretty fucking talented on that front. Um, young Chlo chloroform, you guys, your fucking nicknames, your fucking nicknames are so unreal. I know it's been it, it's been stated that Phantom Liberty is the only planned expansion, but would you guys ever consider making one, uh, making more even with the studio moving from Red Engine to Unreal if there is enough demand? Um, I mean, uh, Young Chloroform. So first of all, thank you for being with us. Uh, uh, like I've been all answering this question a bunch of times. You know, this is unfortunately really like my call to to make, but uh, as I mentioned, it's always like the best uh, the way for for you to ask us to do stuff like that by showing your support by just playing the game talking about it you know um it's always the best way of us knowing you know that you know that is going to be um a thing that we should do so anyhow uh it's as much as i can say you know um holy shit i'm just i'm just so lost in this chat this chat is like a maze you guys talk about my bathroom design. Um, this is like, this chat is wild. Um, Pavel, do you think that the premiere in December 2022 was successful? We would get EP2. Oh, if it would be successful. I mean, Pablo, who knows, you know, who knows? Because like, the thing is like, this changed everything, right? Like, um, and I don't have to like tell you that, you know it. Like, it has changed everything. So... Um, it has, yeah, it has changed everything, you know, uh, like the way we work, the way we are, the way we act, like fucking everything. Uh, so the, 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 the thing is that who knows what would happen. Um, 
you know you're asking specifically about ep2 but you know uh, i i don't know you know if that if the success would be like and i'm because like that, that's the thing it's like cyberpunk is like when when you look at this from the perspective of a businessman right it's very successful financially it's very successful when it comes to the recognition of the ip um like it it was a new ip right like completely new ip uh uh, that broke so sales records, right? Um, like when you look at it as a businessman, it, it, it is successful, right? When you look at it as an artist, well, we we did right sort of like deliver the vision at least partially that we wanted to do, and you know we are getting there closer and closer. I would say still some work to be done. As Gabe was speaking about it, uh, you know, because there are still things that we feel are important uh, before it's there. You know, but like when you look at it from artistic perspective, like the vision of the game, you know, the world, right? Like the story, I would say quests, you know, um, even open world. And I'm not talking about open world mechanics, but the content, you know, like uh, the, the scenes, you know, there's there's so many parts that I'm really proud of, you know, um, in this game. So like artistically and like business wise, it's a gigantic success. Um, but when it comes to the word in the street, Let's call it like this, uh, Pablo, and because this is what we are talking here about, is a different topic, right? Like when you ask, um, you know, uh, a people who just play the game games rarely, you know, they have probably seen some fucking mean memes um, you know, about cyberpunk and some hateful videos, uh, you know, and nothing else. Uh, that's most likely what people saw. Um, and there's still quite a bit of work to do before that's turned. Anyway, I'm, I'm aware, Pablo, I'm not co completely answering your question, but the reason is I, I, I can't really, um, I, I can't really answer it directly because I don't know, you know, uh, like if, if that timeline would be different, who knows, you know. But yeah, anyhow, um, anyhow, uh, my friends, uh, let me move through the questions. Uh, Drelovs asks, Rockstar Games just had a massive GTA 6 leak. Could you give an insight about how Dev Studios handle this kind of leaks? Oh, my friend. Um, yeah, so I, I do know about uh, the leaks itself uh, quite a bit. Uh, I also know some things about the situation. I won't be using any of my let's say insider knowledge because i shouldn't um i will leave it to the rockstar team to handle um i am extremely sorry uh that it happened like you cannot imagine you know guys they've been working years for it years like what you're seeing in those leaks is fucking years of work you know and i'm so sad for it you know because like the artists designers programmers musicians uh, you know, testers, everyone that contributes to the game, they have been robbed of the moment of actually showing you for the first time their trailer with their creation when they're really proud, you know? Um, and they have been robbed of, robbed of that moment. And there is a real damage, you know, to be handled. Like, I don't know how aware you are of that league, but that league is massive. Uh, that league is really massive. And uh, both Rockstar and Take-Two have a, have a very difficult task on their hands to really uh, handle it. And I like tweeted about it today morning when I saw it um, go online. Uh, I asked just to please do not engage with those leaks. Like, do not retweet it. Do not fucking post links on forums and shit. Just leave it. Let, let it like die off, you know. Um, because like this is damaging one of the best game dev studios in the world. And it may sound exciting when you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, but it all looks great. I'm so excited for it. Yes, you are. But you are probably one of the more knowledgeable gamers on the planet. There is like what? 1%, 2% of people that see it and they understand what they are looking at. And everyone else actually doesn't know. Like, look at the Twitter, you know, so many people, it's actually, they actually completely misunderstand what the hell they're even seeing, you know? People keep comparing it to fucking GTA 4, you know? Uh, like, ha have that in mind that when you're saying, oh, but I've seen only positive opinions. Well, because you are probably a, a gamer, a player who is really deeply, like, following, you know, the trends, what devs are saying, what players are saying, 
you know, you and three of your pals may understand that, but nobody else does, you know? Uh, and the fact that people are, you know, tweeting, have in mind that not everyone who's seeing it is actually writing comments, right? Um, so the damage is incredible. And like, I think we, we need to be very careful what we are doing and what we are saying as an industry right now. And I mean us devs and you players, you know? Because like, we could cause a permanent damage to one of the best studios in the world. And seriously, this is like people well-being, their livelihood on the line. Uh, so like really just, you know, you probably want, you know, next, I don't know, next any anything the next Rockstar game makes, you know? You want that game, you don't want to fucking go make them, you know, bankrupt or something they they want of course i'm just you know um or exaggerating to make a point but you we want you know next amazing games from rockstar right and it can damage them you know uh if this will like we need to let them handle this you know um there's much going on uh behind the scenes there's uh, there's lots of uh, lots of turmoil really that this situation has caused um, we, we are going to see a fallout I think at least for weeks probably longer um, it will most likely impact like you know the, 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 the game the team uh, so I, I really I fucking dread to think what the fuck is happening there like the thing is like I went through that shit in beginning was was the beginning of 2021 yeah, jesus i think so right when when we were hacked right i went through that and everyone i i read in the internet people saying that we are lying that we were hacked and so on i know how it is to be fucking you know um uh, i i don't want to say anything more because like um i don't know which informations are public and which are not but you know you know like regarding the rockstar situation so uh like I'll keep it at that, but uh, honestly, the um, the damage can be incredible, and I really hope Take Two and Rockstar handled it properly. Um, and I'm I'm seriously cheering for them, and I'm gonna fucking buy the game for sure, you know, to support them. Um, uh, I really, I really uh, gonna support them, even though like I'm not the huge fucking GTA fan or anything like this, but. Um, you know, and, and they are, you know, it, it's not that they're like collapsing or anything. I don't want to make it sound like this, but uh, it's it's a major blow. You know, it's a major blow to the team. You 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 can't underestimate the impact of this, you know. And there's one thing to understand. Like, people are saying, fuck this, but we've been waiting so long. Yes, but you've been waiting for long for what? To see the early alpha footage? Like, this is what you were like wet for? Seriously? Like, you, you really wanted to see the fucking alpha footage with like, uh, you know, debug tools enabled for, for locomotion? Fucking this is what you're like wet for? I mean, seriously? Uh, honestly, like, we should let people, let devs release the game, uh, release the, the actual like proper statement, you know, with the, uh, with the, with the proper trailer, you know, when they control the message, with the control of the game looks like, you know, so that they can continue making what they are, you know. Like, I know that maybe there are things that, you know, Rockstar did in the past that make you doubt them. But, you know, you fucking played probably, you know, GTA 5, you played GTA 4, you probably played GTA 3. Probably most of you haven't been in the world when GTA 2 was released. Um, but, like, you have at least played, like, GTA since GTA 3, you know. And, you know, you want to play more of them, right? Like, just be... Uh, like, we need to be very conscious, you know? Uh, it can be, they can be really damage done. And just let them handle this. Especially that, you know, like, I know people working there. And also, like, because we in, in the studio, we have former Rockstar team... Uh, rock, rockstar devs. And Rockstar has a former CDPR devs. Because it's normal, right? Big AAA studios very often share devs who are moving you know and so on right and and i know people there it's fucking insane right like i just i i cannot imagine what they go when what they are going through like just an example 
imagine it's 2000, what is it, was it 2019, right? The moment when Keanu walked on the stage, right? I was there, like, on a stage when Keanu walked out, you know, in LA. It was E3 2019, right? It was such an amazing, fantastic fucking moment. Like, one of my, probably one of the, my, my best, like, memories. One of my best memories when it comes to, like, game dev, right? Absolutely. And I remember him, like, walking there. He was fucking screaming, you know, Keanu was so awesome. Everyone was fucking losing their mind, literally. Like, if I right now put up, like, videos of people reacting to Keanu walking on the stage, people just lose their... I literally feel... People lose their mind. I feel like just my whole skin, you know, like, fucking electric sparkles. I feel like a fucking electric... Uh, like the, you know, like a power plant, you know? Just shivers all over the place. Uh, fucking three years after, you know? And I was there in person. And I still feel it. This is such an amazing feeling. And th those moments of reveal, you know, those moments are so important. And, and imagine, just imagine that thing leaks before. And you just see some shit before, you know, and you're like completely disappointed, you know, when when that happens. And you're like, what the fuck is happening, you know? Um, and, 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 and you just fucking post like uh, Sages on the chat. Uh, in, instead of uh, being hyped, you know, with Keanu walking out on the stage, you know? You don't, like, you don't want to spoil that stuff, you know? And those, d d those, uh, those moments are very important, you know, to craft, you know, um, for us. Those are, like, really, like, experiences that stay with you for years sometimes. And it's just, like, people, people by fucking leaking shit, you know, they just, like, rob millions. Like, in case of GTA... It's fucking millions. Like, literally people, uh, the person that did the leak, robbed millions of that experience. And it's like, okay, and, and that's been, that's been something that Rockstar team has been working for like, what, fucking years? Years, absolute years, you know? They had for sure like proper plans, you know, and everything really prepared how to do that and so on. That all went to shit, most likely. I mean, I hope not. I hope not, you know? But it's like, you know, you can't really handle it the same way, right? You just need to, like, do the fucking complete damage control. Anyway, my chums, I'm sorry because, like, um, I, I wanted to give the answer this question properly. It's extremely important. I really, my heart goes to Rockstar team. I really hope they will fucking nail it. We will gonna be playing a GTA 6 when it comes out. It's gonna be fucking stellar. Everyone's gonna love it. We're gonna be talking about it, fucking posting memes, gifs, and everything from, you know, uh, all those, um, uh, all those strip clubs and everything. Um, I hope that we are gonna be hyped as fuck, and, and then the Rockstar team is gonna be proud, you know, uh, of what they did. Um, and I hope that, hope to God that, you know, people will forget, and they won't fucking keep bringing the shit, you know, from, like, uh, th these leaks. Um, Anyhow, uh, my dears, um, that is it. what I wanted to say regarding the topic. Um, I, I hope that, you know, that we, we are going to see the proper, proper uh, you know, statement and acknowledgement of the situation soon uh, from the team. Like, I know that the fucking Rockstar team is fucking dreading, you know, to go to work on Monday and fucking figure out, okay, what the fuck are we doing right now? Like, you know, and anyhow, it's just... I don't want to really, I, I really don't want to go more into this because there's there's so much more going on, but um, I think we're going to find out in time. So um, all, uh, you know, how it was handled and how situation developed. Anyhow, Bells of Laguna Band for you, my chums. Let me scan the chat for one last fucking question and we are going to play the game, okay? Because like, I love chatting with you chums, but seriously, um, um, I'm starting to rot here, uh, and we we need to uh, we need to keep playing Cyberpunk because I hope to God to finish the game before we are uh, before the expansion's out so that we can play it. Because um, sadly, we are like 198 hours in Cyberpunk and fucking nowhere close to completion. Um, leakers to the Gulag, uh, uh, Kazen wrote. Oh well, yeah. 
Uh, Danko asks, do you think that the roads in Night City are too narrow? Driving car is terrible at times. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I am known for actually like driving that car like fucking perfectly and never hitting any any other cars So I'm not really sure what you're talking about Like uh, it's so much space, you know, you can uh, Just uh, really really <laughs> drive. No, my friend. I, I am aware that it's, sometimes it's 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 too thin um, I, I've been hitting shit all over the place, you know every time when I uh, when I drive, I mean, I know that there was a lot of work on the side of our level design team, you know, when we've been actually measuring those, those roads. Because I don't know if you realized, but um, GTA and Cyberpunk are using the same trick. I'm quite sure that um, Watch Dogs as well, but I'm not 100% sure. I had too little experience with the game to, uh, to confirm that the way you do it uh, to keep like the l illusion of it being like a real world but still playable you kind of like double the size of the road and then you put your traffic in the middle to kind of pretend that it's a normal traffic but when you have two lanes and cars are in the center and the spaces are doubled the centers of the car create the space exactly needed for one car to pass so that is basically the um the trick that normally we are using when building stuff like that um and again maybe it was too narrow you know again i'm not i wasn't involved um, in that topic, I know that our level design team did like ton of work to uh, structure it properly, you know um, Maybe some of those like badass big cars when you drag drive those fucking trucks and shit. Maybe they are too um, Too big definitely like motorcycles and smaller cars are fine. So like probably like bigger cars um, are an issue um, We can try it out in the game and see how it feels Okay, uh, my terms, uh, let me, I'm just checking the chat, holy shit. Um, Vinyev, Vinyev J, okay, Vinyev J wrote, congrats to you and the team for the most recent increase in love for Cyberpunk. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of the team, uh, my friend. I'm excited to see what you guys uh, will do with what you have learned for the future. Edge Runners had me tears. My personal plea, I hope you guys work on more relationship interactions and activities in future games, especially as a queer man, seeing more good quality representation in AAA games like Cyberpunk is so great. Just sharing some love from the UK to all you chums. Uh, thank you so much, uh, so much, Avinif J. Um, I really appreciate you, especially like the, the point you made about like queer representation and um, properly representing, especially the relationships. As, as you can see, like, it was, like, ton of work, uh, you know, put into that field. Because it was really important for us, um, you know, also for LGBTQ uh, team, you know, inside Red, to really, like, you know, like, do it well. Uh, because, like, I don't want to say that none games did it well before us. But it wasn't, like, an abundance, you know? It wasn't, like, oh, yeah, that all of the games have it done well. So, um, and I, I think, like... One thing that we really do in a decent way is um, the relationships, you know. And I'm not talking about I'm not, I'm not talking about girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend situation, couple situation. I'm talking relationships between people, you know, relations. Um, I think we do it in a decent way, and, and I really, um, I really want to like go forward and develop that. Um, we had like. Uh, with the directors, we actually had a bunch of conversations regarding like what we feel we should do, you know, moving forward with that stuff and so on. Um, and um, there's some ideas to do shit that nobody ever did, which I really like, uh, because that's definitely in my avenue. Um, when you try stuff like that, sometimes you fail, sometimes you may, you know, you you succeed, but uh, you know, uh, without trying, you will fucking stay in place, you know. So uh, I'm really excited. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. That's the, I will leave it there. I will leave it there. Um, empty, empty WW. Um, can you tell me, please, why boss fight with Adam Smasher is so weird lore-wise? Like, you can kill him even using a dildo. I mean, my friend, dildo's pretty powerful, so uh, that's probably the answer. But even aside of it, the fight is general looks weird because Smasher is an experienced killer machine and V's just a young dying mercenary that kills him one on one. That, uh, that's strange as fuck. Yet in anime, Smasher look like a real danger as he should be. Yeah, absolutely empty. I mean, 100% agree with you. Like, uh, 
it, 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 like, uh, don't get me wrong, like, the design wasn't like, oh yeah, and we'll, we'll do, do such a shoddy job to make it that player is like, um, that players will just smack him with a dildo and keep, kill him easily, right? That, that wasn't the design, right? The design was to achieve the feeling that you're sort of uh, portraying in your question, you're really to make him a, a killer, deadly machine. The problem was that it wasn't, they didn't really work out. Like, as you can look at the patches, I think starting even from 1.2, 1 1.3, 5, and 6, like each of them uh, included a bunch of the, um, I would say, uh, balancing changes. Some of them bigger, some of them smaller, uh, but they are there. They are all aimed to actually help out with the problem that you are uh, just um, underlying. And Gabe uh, Amatangela, our game director, on his video during Night City Wire has been speaking actually about our intentions regarding like moving forward, what is going to, what is getting bigger reworks. So if you're interested in that, just uh, check, uh, you know, the, the video from Night City Wire uh, when Gabe was talking to Piotr uh, Pavel Buja about, um, about to topics like this, you know, and he touched uh, this point, but we are definitely aware of um, what you mentioned. Uh, George Rutsu, congrats on patch 1.6 anime. I watched six episodes, so no spoilers. Can you add cross progression with next gen update to Witcher 3, or is it difficult because of old version of Red Engine used for the game? Um, George. Uh, so thank you for your thank you for your question. Um, I cannot speak about future content as you can imagine, but uh, thank you for making me aware uh, of the topic. Uh, the thing is that um, the uh, Witcher Three, as you imagine, as you imagine, is a game that was released on the previous iteration of Red Engine, right? I, I fucking lost track, but I think it was Engine Three, Red Engine Three, and Cyberpunk is Red Engine Four. So uh, and 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 like uh, Cyberpunk's Red Engine is almost. And, and like, I, I mean like almost, almost completely written from scratch, right? There are like single fucking things that you can like see some similarities or resemblance because the resemblance is just um, uh, that they are similar. Uh, but the, uh, you know, uh, it's completely different engine. So yes, you are like kind of correct with your question that it's a completely different engine, uh, basically, even though those are next iterations of Red Engine. Um, that being said, uh, uh, that being said, uh, you know, I, uh, not saying anything about the future content, but thank you, uh, for making me aware of what, um, what the thing is. I, I hope you're enjoying the, um, cross progression. They dropped the cameo of Pavo's driving in the edge runner, Smasher's wife wrote. Oh, thanks, Smasher's wife. That's definitely, that's definitely what it was. That, that was definitely an intention. I remember watching you with Sapphire and we were like, this is wild. <laughs> when when um, when David's driving, we're like, okay. Complex Complexity asks, is uh, FF06B5 related to breach sequences? I don't know, is it? I don't know, my friend. Do, uh, do you think it's, it's related? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be speaking more about it to, uh, not to, you know, um, spoil anything. Um, <laughs> nothing is as powerful as level 20 Netrunner. Exactly. Um, Overwatch got that much nerfed in 1.6. Oh, I don't know. I didn't try it yet. We are, we are, we are for a treat. That reminds me that we should play the game. Holy fuck. Adam Smasher should have a phases or puzzle puzzle style boss fight to beat him. Um, killing him with regular birds and fucking dildo is absurd. True. I mean, I'm not sure if I agree with the dildo, but yeah, with bullets, you're right. Uh, could you consider rebalancing Adam Smasher's boss fight to make it more uh, difficult, or is V just that powerful? I mean, V V gets more powerful, of course, uh, but uh, this is sort of a topic that I touched uh, upon a moment ago. My friends, we are two hours into the stream. What is this dildo shaming exactly, Cyber Vesna? Fucking uh, exactly. 
Not on the stream, you know? Not on the stream. Um, are there any plans of making the Netrunner more a difficult dome uh, ask? So, a dome, as I can, uh, I can answer, I can still send you back to the video of Gabe Amatangelo talking about it during Knights of the Wire. I think he touches it there. Why is there sun so yellow in Cyberpunk at noon? Not a bot asks. Uh, well, I mean, um, uh, I I don't know. Is it too yellow? <laughs> not sure. Is it too yellow? Uh, maybe. Uh, um, I, I think it's a question more to our artists. You know, my friend. Sorry. <laughs> Asha Swelker wrote not on my watch. I guess this is a uh, regarding the dildo discussion. Uh my chums, I, I'm, I'm seeding all your questions and I'm loving this chat that we're having, but fucking hell, we should go and play the game. Okay? Um, Pavo asks, will you be posting the VODs on YouTube channel? Yes, of course. Of course, I, uh, I'm going to. I'm going to. Yeah, let's play. Let's play it, baby. Okay, I'm loading the game right now. Oh, by the way, Chums, I had some issue with my... I had some issue with one of my saves. And I, unfortunately, I think when I was um, doing the uh, cleanup of illegal stuff, I have uh, removed my last save, unfortunately. Um, which is not nice. But it wasn't like just us, I think, killing the Cyber Psycho. So we have to kill him again. Anyhow, uh, I just stopped the music, so um, that's the game. Uh, I know you guys are uh, illegal safe. No, I'm not illegal safe. But let me let me actually check if I'm not if I'm not having any illegal shit. No, oh fucking so legal, so legal that I'm even ashamed of myself. You know, um, uh, show us some. No, 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 no. <laughs> Aimbot. <laughs> Not, no aimbot, not aimbot. I'm so fucking good. I don't need aimbot anyway, of course, joking. Because I'm I'm so shit, but <laughs> when it comes to playing. Anyway, let's go. You see the game? And you hear the sound? Illegal schlong of Night City. Oh god. <laughs> Pinky Julian. Is that like a mod you're working on? I hope so. Okay, my dears. My dears, oh, we have right because we have a, a, a requirement for the, we have a requirement for 05 because I think right we need body to 20 right, yeah because that thing has changed, okay we need four more body to use, to use the 05, that is not nice, that was so such a good run, okay I'm gonna switch it to Overwatch, okay oh wow it's so nerfed, oh, oh it's like half. Fuck! It's like half my tombs. God damn it! This is like, oh. Okay. Anyway, let me dismantle this. Um. I love, I love fucking working on the patches for this game. Honestly, honestly, it's so, it's so fun actually to bring you guys new stuff. You know, um. Especially, you know, after we like chat and so on about it. Okay, um, t -t 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 -t, let me do it. Ooh, oh, okay, this way. This is all. This all got fucking rebalanced. Okay, okay, cool. I guess. Um, nothing here. More. Okay, some helmet. Dury up. Polydetic cap. Interesting. Cool. Cool, but this is too weak, I guess. Um, can you speak about the creative decision to bring Regis into blood and wine since he dies in the box? Science fiction per person said. Well, I mean, science fiction person, I assume you know books uh, very well. So you know that in the books it was hinted that he might have not died and he may, may have regenerated himself, right? Uh, I know because I was, uh, you know, one of the people that was really um, behind, well, behind the decision. I was really asking... Uh, when we were working on it together with Mateusz Tomaszkiewicz, Marcin Blaha, to bring back uh, Regis, I really wanted him. And actually, my quest, uh, La Cajoufou, in um, 
the blood and wine is the one that introduces Regis. You know, the first meeting with him, when you find him, the boss fight, when, he, when, when uh, you know, uh, <laughs> there is this, uh, there is the m moment, you know, with uh, our main vampires being introduced, that's, that's, you know, where my quest starts. Till the end of the whole Spoon Collector story, story, which is actually interesting because the Spoon Collector is something I did together with Miles. Uh, Miles was building the uh, location for me uh, there. The hell? I've never seen that skin in my... Oh, sorry, guys. Ah, okay. I've never seen that skin. It looks like... It looks like better here um, and then actually it looks in the... Uh, in the game. And I was like... I was hyped for a second. Um... Okay, anyhow, let me dismantle some of those trash guns um, that uh, because I don't need them. I don't need them. What is what? What was this weird, weird, weird uh, scroll? So yeah, and the decision was basically that we examined the books, my friend, and we saw okay, you know, it it is kind of hinted um, that you know Regis might have survived. You know what has happened to him in the books, uh, because if I remember correctly. Uh, there was a spell created of a of a um, uh, in the books. It's described that it has a temperature of a small sun. Uh, I remember this was how Sapkowski de described it uh, to really uh, to destroy uh, Regis. And I have uh, we have of course you know discussed that. This pulsar should I keep it? I will just keep it just for, for just for um, just for fun, you know. Okay, chums. Uh, let's save the game. Let's save the game and let's go. Oh yeah, that scroll happened to me a lot. Really? Rain quack, but is that a new issue? I've never seen that issue. Seriously? No, it doesn't really... It doesn't really pop up like fucking instantly. Hmm. Okay, when we'll be playing more, I'll pay attention to it. If this is... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Fucking Ozops, Ozops knows. I forgot that, yeah, it's... Uh, I think it was Philip Weber uh, who added the... Uh, I think it's here, right? Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah. Brings new meaning to blowing one's nose. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a that's a, that's a nice way. That's a nice way. Best grenade. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Um okay my chums. Um let me let's let, let us go and fucking punish that um cyber psycho properly. Where, 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 where is he? Oh, yeah, 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 because we were here investigating, exactly. Because, I, as I mentioned, like, I unfortunately, by accident, when cleaning the, when cleaning the fucking illegal stuff, I cleaned up too much. Okay, I mean, it's still, it's still kind of, oh, Jesus. Those motherfuckers at the top, I forgot about them. Okay, okay, chimps, we need to deal with them. Woo. It's interesting that, you know, because uh, we are playing them very hard, by the way. Like, every every time, you know, when new patch comes in, the game gets harder, right? Because it's like the, the balance changes are added. And, like, every single time I need to get, like, adjusted to new sort of difficulty of the... of, of very hard. What the hell? Shit! Dropping that nice here! Holy heck! Make decisions! <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> you like that well, I mean depends. Depends who asks. What the Okay. Fight fair! <laughs> nice! <laughs> Is there is there something wrong with the beast mode? I have it and I can't install it. 
God damn it, my friend, I have no idea, actually, to be honest. Could you please let our, let know our customer support that you have an idea, uh, have issue like that? Uh, is there any requirement, like, on it? Because, like, there was, like, a bunch of new requirements added to things and so on, on the patches. Um, oh, Hekalite wrote, I'm really enjoying the, the difficulty change. I'm glad. I'm glad you are. I'm not, I'm not, I have to admit. Because I'm getting my ass handed to me. Seriously. Uh, is CDPR away on the SSR bug uh, with DLS? Maybe it's NVIDIA site. I am pretty sure it's a known issue, uh, but could you please, could you please message it to our customer support team? Um, like to Chivok and so on, that would be, um, that would be great, my friend, because I seriously, I'm seriously not sure, you know, uh, if the team is completely aware of that, you know? Make decisions! Lol. <laughs> Disabled ones wrote that gun, gun, gun killing all skills and uh, use on the stream. Come on. I mean, my friend, I am not a pro fucking player. I'm trying to play in uh, in effective ways so that I can go through the content, you know, with YouTube. Um, I'm trying to switch between those, and I have, I have my own fair share of deaths. I don't know. Camille can tell you, but I think I died like. 283 times already in 198 uh, hours of the game so I don't think it's much but chat believes it is so I'm not sure maybe you guys can uh, discuss it Kaidek wrote gotta go and have fun see you all uh, thank you so much Kaidek for being here with us um, let's turn off this bad boy Hey, Chooms. Ben the Babylon. Oh, Jesus Christ. The arena got closed. I am dying here. Uh, am I? I'm totally fucking dying here. I can totally see it. Okay, Chooms. Let's try. Let's try some new toys. What are. How are you feeling about it? Interesting. Interesting. Okay, Chooms. Uh, what? Oh, there you are. Catch all the snows. Oh, holy. Oh, sacre bleu. Yes. Uh, omelette en fromage. As you can see, he was harder though. A communet. Oh, communet, you say. Um, he was much harder to kill than last time. Like on 1.5, when we actually go into this guy, uh, I think I close to like one shot him or something. Uh, I think we need to collect the data. I think we read those messages. Yeah, we read those messages around last time. Okay. So uh, even though I really enjoy reading the messages, I won't read it again. Um, let me let me just check this. What the heck? Okay, and come on components. Hmm, nice hot dogs. Go right by the shore for a hidden place. There is a boat at the shore with interesting loot, like 400 meters away. Ah, uh, Camille, we've been on a boat there. Are you sure that we didn't visit it before? Uh, I will take a look, uh, of course. But I'm just I'm just wondering because I think we've looted not. Plenty of boats actually um, in the past there on this place. Okay, my chums, I think we need to message Regina Jones. And that's not what I. Mm, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, where are you? Is she? Here you are. That's the one. It was a Voodoo Boys Netrunner. 
Looks like he wanted to move up the ranks by tanking over the gym. Hired a Merc who has then tried to zero blowing his own cover from Netwatch. I ignored him up, but he will stir breeding. Um, okay, let's just uh, send it and we'll see if uh, she is uh, responding with anything. Thanks for picking me alive, V. I'll have my people come at him. He must have been scared shitless with that voodoo boy's den. Oh, really? Did I really keep him, keep him alive by accident? God damn it. Yeah, I mean, definitely alive. Definitely alive. Good. Okay, um, okay, cool. Um, so, <laughs> now when we get rid of get rid of the cyber psycho we watched we watched uh, in the uh, edge runners sorry right like uh we know how it ends we know how the stories end so i want to be i want to be sure will you move to witcher after expansion or do you uh, intend to go to other projects uh, oh i uh i do uh, i cannot yet uh i think speak about it in any way my friend you know what's the plan uh, for the future, my friend, regarding this specific topic. So, um, uh, when the time is right, we'll definitely discuss this. Mm. Oh, this is the beat on the brat when they fucking beat the shit out of me. I'm just worried that right now this is gonna be much more difficult, Chums. Pavo is the best candidate for Max the team. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's go and uh, let's... Oh, all right, because there's more content because we added the, the gigs. Um, I was like, oh, there's more gigs. I'm like, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm hearing you, Camille. You said tame right. You said the boat along the pier, but you're talking about the boat here on the beach. Go by the shore. Hmm, okay. Gigs were prim. Oh! Interesting. Interesting. Some euro dollar. Wunderbar. Ach so. Let me read it. So, uh, Theo Farron is talking the human project. Ex uh, interesting. Let us check it, my chums. Theo Farron is asking, what's the plan? Once you have the mother and the kid go down into the sewers, enters from ground level. There will be a boat. You will take it out into open waters. Our people will be about half a mile off the night city coast. The ship will only wait for 15 minutes before leaving. Understood! And in case we run into trouble? The Rasaka gear is important. But a kid's safety is your number one priority. If you can, the goal is to secure both. Okay, got it! The girl must be saved from Arasaka. I'm on a move! Keep us in the loop. Theo? Theo, report in. We're waiting on a rendezvous point! Good. Status? The girl and the mother are uh, unharmed. Um, me, uh, not so much. Think they finally got me. This time, I guess it happens to the best of us. The girl, she's a living wonder. Yeah, just uh, gave his last breath there. That sounds really soothing. Oh, thank you. A children of men reference? Oh! I believe so. That is a Children of the Men reference. And here's the boat that our friend Camille was talking about. Inter interesting. Well, the, that was nice. Let's go. Uh, Woodrow people clap. Thank you so much, my friend. Fucking voice acting is my passion, as you can uh, very clearly see. Uh, very clearly. Sir Lucy Children of Man is a great film. Uh, exactly. Ooh, there's some bad people. I mean, they look bad to me. 
You bad person. Catch my grenade. Holy shit, that grenade has like violet explosion color. Nice. Okay. It wasn't that difficult. Uh, boys were here on the grill. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. I'm curious what for he had this naturalness suit on him. They were probably um, up to no good. It's communet time. <laughs> Absolutely fucking communet time. Sure, they think the same about you. Oh, uh, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I do Vanessa Palmer like a female V in Pan and Palmer married content got a hate comment a few weeks ago saying I'm ruining I'm ruining CDPR story. Am I ruining CDPR story or do I like my content and one content who do the same thing? I mean we were talking about it some time ago in in the streams, which is like you guys are free to do with those characters whatever you like. Honestly. Like the head content or your head canon is camp um, uh, is completely different thing than you know the the actual game canon, and you can fucking do everything you want, like honestly. You know, like if if you want to do like a woman storyline between fucking uh, you know uh, Brandon and Delamain, fucking go for it. You know, uh, make them have their own uh, small vending machines. You know, that are like delivery cars. They they could have like together the. Um, you know, like a, like a, a ice cream trucks and so on, something like this. Uh, you know, something kind of in between, like a, like a vending, not a vending machine, but not a, you know, not the car really, like something like that. Like fucking go for it, you know. I'm I'm at the cyber cycle area, chums. Let's save. Fast food cars company, exactly. Founded by Brandon Delamain. Yeah, exactly. And fucking, you know, make them like, uh, make, make, make Skippy their PR person, you know? Like, if you, if you feel that this is your, like, canon that you want to build on, just fucking go for it, man. And don't bother, like, I mean, seriously. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, when you're, like, creative and you're, like, building things, uh, you know, uh, for yourself, but also for others to enjoy. There will be always people that will tell you that, the, you know, this is like a completely moronic what you're doing, and there will be people that will love you for it, you know? That's the way it works. Um, the bigger you get, the worse it gets. But it's normal, you know? It's normal. And you know what I mean? You know what they say? The moment when you get your first haters, this is a, this is a sign of success. So, my friend, you have actually made it. You have actually made it. Because if you get your first haters, that is a sign that you have actually made it, you know? That's the way it works. Yeah, that's the way that that, that means you're doing it right. Exactly what Smasher's wife wrote. Okay, my chums. Jesus. Sofia Ramirez, young woman, clothing suggests sex work. No shit. Tortured to death several days ago. Jesus Christ, tortured to death? These fucking people. Oh, okay. So V thinks that that cyber psycho is on the pier. I'm just checking if there are any clues or anything interesting here. Okay. Cause crushed by car. Appears to be first shooting victim. Okay. Huh. Someone fucking drove into this. Like, that's the way you do, basically, the... That's the way you do the uh, environmental storytelling, you know? You just place things in a way that you, as a as a player, when you, like, walk around and you're attentive, you can, like, put together what happened. Appears to have been closed in a close-range firefight, riddled with bullets fired from a military rifle at close range. Oh, so is our cyber psycho military? What the heck happened here? Okay, my chums, let's go upstairs. Okay. Oh, this pier is just like one fucking gigantic arena. Nice. Saving the game. This was one of your fabs? Oh, okay. Uh, Batsev. 
3,000. Is there an Easter egg on this pier? Oh god, my friend, I don't know everything by my by heart, like from my memory. I mean, could be. Uh, what what to what kind of Easter egg? Because there's like so many of them, um, in the game. There's another person. Corpse. Appears to have been retreating down the pier, shot in the head from military grade rifle. What was happening here? Like this cyber psycho is like fucking executing people. This one was also retreating. Jesus Christ! This is like a murder scene. What? So like people were escaping from a pier and was like shooting them. Appears an arm shooting victim. Okay. Edge of map frame rate boost. Okay. I mean, if you say so, my friend. I think we are capped at 60 anyway, uh, because I'm streaming, and for the stream it's better to just, like, um, you know, stream, uh, sorry, have the frame rate cap at the same rate as I'm, um, like, sending the data, because otherwise for you it will look like I'm glitching, while in fact, when I have, in fact, a very hard frame rate, so it's better to cap. <laughs> He must have snapped due to that peer pressure. Queen Solo Forder wrote, uh, absolutely, uh, definitely, definitely this is how it looks like. All of them have money and uh, fucking pop turd. Uh, fantastic. It's exactly what I was missing. Um, okay. Okay, Chums, I'm seriously getting... Are you gonna check out the Trasmog? Yeah, I am. I'm, maybe, I'm not sure if today, but yeah, we're definitely gonna check it. Definitely gonna check it. Kind of the same uh, way as last time. Maybe we should also like sub uh, uh, recon grenade. <laughs> Maybe we should actually um, do the um, also like buy some apartment rooms and play some fucking road trace, yo. Well built, heavy type looks like muscle. Appears to have gathered here for last stand. What the fuck? So they were like standing and fucking shot each other? What happened here? Appears to be the group leader. Only victim not to be killed immediately suffered a slow and painful death. Okay. We got archive conversation between, between uh, Hideoshi Uena, Ueno and Ken Masudo, uh, my dears. Because Patrick asked for a suggestion, it would be awesome if you could play Pachinko. Oh, cool. <laughs> Having the ability to change our gun's appearance, there's one different model for each gun, uh, may, maybe at Wilson's store too. Oh, I see what you mean. Cool. Uh, nickname rope. I heard about the hidden mechanic regarding the new Rebecca shotgun R1.6 that allows you to survive from a great height and wanted to ask if it's intended mechanic or just some bug. I ha have no idea nickname. I'll have to ask a, a um, our uh, gameplay designer uh, um, Kamilia Kubowski who does the guns um, and just check with him. Uh, it doesn't sound like a bug to be honest and it's probably intentional but who the fuck knows. I'll need to, I'll need to check with him, you know? Okay, my chums, let's check it. So, Hidoshi Weno is talking to Ken Masuda. Motherfucker already killed 20 of ours! What's taking so long? He's hunting us, biding his, buying, biding his time. Two, three businesses down to drain because of you! Can't even see him, he's caught up like a rat, waiting for a perfect moment. She's just right, she's perfect, you will see. My fucking ass? What are you waiting for? Draw him out! Your lead ads, use her as a bait! Understood, boss. Uh, we'll set a trap with a daughter and this fucker once and for all. It's not about a daughter anymore, it's about revenge. Remind him the girl's all that matters, you dumb shock of shit! 
When he pokes his ugly head out, I'll nail him between the eyes. At least he's using his cattle like you. Yesterday I had a gra grass rustle in the wind and thought he was coming out, burned down my house. I can't live like this. Intense fucking conversations. <laughs> and the Oscar for best voice acting goes to. Uh, yeah, I mean, probably not me, but I'm doing my best. I'm actually really, really liking those, these conversations. <laughs> They're so funny, sometimes. What the fuck's happening? He's gone psycho! Oh, he's gone psycho? Oh shit, he's killing people there. Let's just wait, maybe they'll damage him so he will be weaker. <laughs> Unarmed civilian like he hiding. Live the game differently with Pavo. Shit. Diego Ramirez. Hello, Diego. How's life? Oh, shit. Fucking dodging bullets like a madman. What the fuck? That's uh, fun. Nope. Nope. Fucking ch uh, running around him, around the kiosk. It's like fucking shopping experience. What the hell? Diego, this is fucking unhealthy what you're doing. You can, fa you can fall and kill yourself. Diego, stop it. I didn't even fucking break a sweat, though. Yo. Uh, that's That was not what I wanted to do. Yo, Diego, you fucking liked that kiosk, didn't you? Huh. You know, guys, like, um... Okay, behind, behind the scenes story, Jesus Christ, there's so many people that uh, redeemed the points. Uh, by very binary. Cool. Very binary redeemed the behind the scenes story. So, guys, like, actually, when we were, like, designing those uh, cyber psychos, like, you can see that each of them actually has, like, s completely different appearance. Every time, you know, uh, our, like, art team has been working with the, um, with the, um, uh, like uh, quest team in this case to make sure that all those appearances are actually matching as well as we can to the story of the characters and we have like, make like i don't know 20 of them or something you know each one of them to really like make it uh feel properly and so on that's why like a lot of them wear stuff that you can really see on other NPCs and so on. Those are mostly component characters. So that kind of characters are made out of pieces of other NPCs together with additional like custom elements added on top of it, uh, you know, to make it feel uh, unique and and uh, and well. Uh, but it's um, the um, it, it always gives it it always gives it this like really really bonkers uh, you know proper feel, but also this um, you know artistic like touch. You know that it was like manually done, it's not like randomly um, dead generated content. Um, Mr. Snail 44 wrote Pavo. I would suggest that those conversations, the future, sorry man, I just uh, scrolled up, uh, should have the UI of phone messages. It would make it easier to keep two parties apart and it would be more immersive. Oh yeah, I know what you mean, absolutely. The best one was the woman out of the coffin, yes. Uh, my sand, uh, absolutely. I've, I have, uh, uh, we, we have done it, I think, already. This is the one that Moritz Lair uh, did uh, from the questing. Okay, can Masuda and Diego Ramirez are talking? Can Masuda, I forgot the, what the voice I was doing for him. I think he was the, the, um, I think I know which one that was. We want to trace interested. I want my daughter, and I'll get her with or without a truce. We made a mistake. We want to give her back. Damn right you did. When and where? Period Pacifica. We leave the girl, and we go our separate ways. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Don't make me look for you. It, uh, uh, you know, have this, uh, has this feeling of taken, you know? Shums. 
Um, I'll find you and I'll kill you. Uh, is this where you can find under a pier of the cart? Uh, I'm not sure if you're dying actually. We found that cart already under the pier before. But I'm gonna check because I don't think I explored the whole pier yet. I'm supposed to mesh to Regina already. Jesus Christ. This guy killed like 20 fucking people. Uh, here, okay. Um, I love, <laughs> I love Liam Neeson exactly. Which take it one, two, three, take it, take it again or five. Adam Smasher never went cyber psycho because it's natural behavior to him. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's good, 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 good comment, Machiavelli. Good comment. Don't forget to look for the harpy egg. What? What harpy egg? Sir, what? I don't think I know what you're talking about. What's the harpy egg? Is like a, is there something here that I should be looking for? Hmm. If you bring Diego's, Diego's daughter body from the van to him during the fight, he will react to that. Oh, that's cool, Voito. I didn't know that. That's very cool. That's very cool. It's a fucking tragic story though, when you think about it. You know, I think we found that van before, because I remember diving here. I think so. Oh, he is just lying here. Drowned man's note. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I, I I don't know what that is. I never found that. Hmm. Drowned men's note. Let's uh let's um Oh fuck, I fucking know what it is. Okay. Okay, let's look at it, tubes, because this is fucking some stellar some stellar storytelling. I was so close. Thousands of caches and stashes all marked with that tantalizing question mark. The mark of smugglers. But in the end, it was always the same. Broken nets, fishing rods, hooks and lines. It's a game. A cruel, ludicrous game. One genuine fund for every thousand fakes. One ace for a deck of spades, a queen hidden within the swarm of pouts. I promised myself I find it, even at a cost of my life. Thousands of stashes. And I only of have one left, but the exhaustion got into me. And I can't do that. I can't go on. This obsession has destroyed not only my mind, but my body too. Bitter frustration in all that remains. If you find my note, finish what I started. Find the cashier with the question mark. It's under the southernmost pillar in the Night City Ring Road overpass that joins Haywood to Pacifica. Don't let my hard work be in vain. Sounds sounds like uh, me talking about FF zero six B five. I want you as a camel. You're too good of an actor. I mean, Ushiro Tsuki. I am a camel. You know, I'm a fucking dying man and carry in the river during sex, and also uh, moaning men and women behind the doors um, in um, no tell motel. So here you go, you know, uh, uh, you know, my talents uh, have been uh, definitely uh, spotted uh, by our audio team. Um... <laughs> okay, Chums, I think we're supposed to message Regina. Do I, do I get it right? I believe so. Okay, cyber smoke on the water. It wasn't easy, but I managed to keep him alive. Exactly. That's the way I roll, Chums. Glad you made it out in one piece and left our guy alive. Too bad. Nice city's apex predators. Already sniffed him out. Mini Max stack. Probably best if we went out their way this time. Tigers look a liking to the girl and decided to turn her into a doll. Big mistake. 
Little did they know her daddy was an ex-special forces. Wasted no time in hunting their sorry sides though. I'm laughing because this is like such a fucking obvious taken, taken, taken easter egg. Only option they had left was to lure him into a trap. Bigger mistake. Don't underestimate an ex-commando who wants his daughter back. He hunted every last tiger as easily as it was on a goddamn safari. Gangers picked the wrong tomb to fuck with. Yeah, V, v likes to be like, you know, uh, tough. Uh, what do you think about the trend to make bigger and larger games? I love larger games, but it makes me sad at smaller but more complex games like Witcher 2. It's unlikely to happen anytime soon. I mean, uh, the, the Witcher 2 falls into the category of, I would say, uh, triple, uh, sorry, double A, you know? And double A is a, is, a strange, is a strange space, I would say, for video games. Because this is a place where you already need to have a pretty decent budget, like pretty large budget. But in this, in, in pretty experienced and, and strong team, but in the same time, you're like deciding to make something smaller why we could, why, why you could have went for something bigger um, in the same time. And that's why they're not really happening, uh, just because they exist in the space between like absolute indies created by few people and um, the skilled, experienced teams that already have, you know, some of the... Um, um, that already have, you know, budget, experience, time, you know, to really make it. So it's always a, it's always a, uh, a difficult feat, you know, that's why it's just like either, it's in most cases just smaller, yeah. Juby's apartment, I mean, we've been to Juby's apartment last time. Buy apartment in Glen and check out Transmog, please. I mean, we, we can do it maybe next time, you know, because it's already uh, it's already 50 minutes left for the stream. And I really want to, like, continue, you know, playing the game. We've been talking so much. And if I will go check Transmog, it will end up with me rumbling uh, for another, for, for the whole fucking stream. And, and I want to, like, play something. Also, because I need to finish this game. Like, I need to finish this game before the expansion comes out. And I'm seriously fucking so slow that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna never finish it in this speed. Okay, we have like ton of shit for, for Padre here um, and, uh, to, to do. But there's, there's those two gigs and this one gig there because I think those are new unlocked gigs. Maybe we should actually go for this. So, you know, try it because I think this is one of the new ones. And there are also side jobs already here. Uh, is, that a con is that a next, is that a next one from Brandon? I'm not sure. No, that's not one. I actually don't remember what was that. Question about deceased. What happened if all these people who died in sh in shootings in lore? What happens with all these people who died in shootings in lore? Well, I mean, normally they are collected, you know, in time by the mid wagons, right? So like the, you know, um, the, uh, how do you call it? Trauma team for poor people, basically just ambulances, right? They just go over and like, yeah. Could kind of like collect the dead sort of I cannot jump there uh, at all oh okay uh, staircase that's a good solution the weather in Stalia seems to have been stuck in cloud yeah ironic I know but I wonder if it was a known issue internet of games uh, uh, internet of games I have no idea I didn't hear about this uh, problem um, I don't think the weather can be related to the platform really don't think so um, so what I would advise you to uh, do in this situation is to yeah i'm gonna grab a bike and go there um is to like send it to our customer support i i know that i'm always saying it but those tombs are honestly uh, amazing and they're very helpful and they will like f help us out to figure it out what the fuck's going on uh, like what's wrong with it you know um in, in, if there's any like problem and so on so would be best uh did you think uh uh, did not think that Witcher 2 is a double-A game. It makes Mass Effect 2 double-A uh, as well. Well, Hades, it's a difficult it's a difficult conversation because at the time, and please remember about this, at the time when uh, Witcher 2 was created, that was, uh, seriously, let me think. It was 2009 to, to 2011, 2008 2000, to 2011, right? That was the time when it was created. At the time, 
th those were kind of the ways how, how AAA games were made, right? Like, nowadays, it is a double-A, you know? Um, like, nowadays, I think, like, that game wouldn't be considered AAA. It would be too small. It would be too closed off, I think, um, for, a, for, like, a triple-A RPG. I'm talking about The Witcher. From, like, major major developer, because if that would be, like, an indie company, right, that creates a game of that size and so on, yeah, then absolutely. But I think in that case, like, everyone would kind of, like, assume that it's a double-A, really, not a triple-A uh, game. So, so in a way, a smaller scope. But, you know, a a again, those things change in time, you know, uh, the... Like, at the time, like, both Mass Effect or, uh, you know, or Witcher 2 were definitely, like, considered, I think, by, by majority of the audience at AAAs. And they were, because at the time, like, bigger games really didn't exist, right? Like, that was before the era of really massive, of really massive open-world RPGs. Because, like, Witcher 3 was one of the first, or, or, or the first, you can say, uh, real... Uh, Open world RPG. Okay, Chums. Desperate measures. Knock, knock. Listen up. We've got a corpo in dire need. Our boy, he got sick and ended up in a wheelchair. Now he's reaching for his boss's fat wallet. Now that I can get down with. But what do you say? Not about to leave him hanging, are we? Deeds attached. Okay. Okay, let's check it. Let's check it, my chums. So yes, um, El Cap buddy, exactly. Um, uh, how do you personally feel about the second chance because of Edgerners? Do you think the expansion will satisfy the haters? I mean, well, you know, it's hard for me to say. You know what people will say after the expansion is out. Like, I I was talking about it at the beginning of the stream that like. And I can talk about it only from myself, but I know that the team, a lot of the people in the team, you know, feels the same, but because, you know, this is my private stream, sort of, I'm talking to you guys, I'll be talking on my behalf, however, I know that the team feels the same, which is that, you know, we want to make you proud, you know, we want to make you feel that the game has, like, that you have, that was good, that you, you know, you have believed into this game, that you have, like, um, supported us, uh, for all the way and um, I mean I feel it's gonna be really fucking bad as expansion uh, but I don't want to hype you guys I told you that already before I don't want to hype you you know like just basically you'll see and then you'll judge um, like definitely fucking doing everything in my power you know um, to make it like valuable and worthwhile that's 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 what i want to say uh geek type tv still an automated zeta vehicle okay oh uh gig about driving something for me better get some tissues ready oh shit that sounds like to the project fucking story uh this one's gonna be a real tear jacker Pedro Aymar, a guy who thinks he's some kind of Nova Netrunner, because he coded a few algorithms for Zerade. Well, now he wants to clap their ass. It's not what you think. See, he has some kind of health problems, and Zerade doesn't want to chip in for his operation. Crazy, right? A corp that doesn't give a shit about his employee. I'm practically speechless. Well, now look at that. Tears are splashing onto my screen. This is a life and death situation. VP Pedro needs our help. He and we really need the Eddies. <laughs> Pedro wants to clap this at a truck full of A-grade tech. Already gonna buy it. Meet up with Pedro, Pedro and figure out how you wanna play this. If you help him, our readiness to help a poor soul in need will be handsomely rewarded. Okay, chums, let's go. Uh, could you please tell us what's the difference between the phases of the research per production, full production, and game dev? We heard that stage of research of the new Witcher is over, and I wonder what it means. Well, I mean, stage of research in, in most cases, this is the situation when you are, first of all, like formulating the team, the team structure, you know, agreeing on basically who is doing what, what are the 
uh, needs for the teams that you have for the given project. So it's basically organize, organizational phase. But there's also a part when, in which the team needs to read, you know, read a lot of books, play a lot of games, you know, check a lot of things, have conversations, have discussions, have brainstorms, you know. So this is a phase when you're basically like kind of like doing the library um, uh, stage, you know, like kind of when you're reading a book, at first you're doing an excessive research to actually be knowledgeable about the topic that you're going to write about. That's kind of what it was, you know, what it is always. So it's a preparation phase always, you know, um, uh, at the very beginning of uh, the project. And then normally that is followed by the pre-production when you actually start producing things, putting, putting things into place, into the game, you know, start building, start testing the first solutions for the designs. You are um, basically starting to build, to play with the tools and really like try to make it happen. And normally that pre-production has some very clear and tangible objectives, you know, that we want to achieve uh, with the game so that you can, at the end of the pre-production, you can say, and this is of course the best possible situation with pre-production that you can have when pre-production ends with an answered questions of I know what the game is, I know what the game we, were, we want to make and we mostly know the key, iconic, most important, biggest features of the game and we kinda, even on a small piece of content, we kinda nail the feeling of playing on that game that's basically the pre-production stage you know the moment when you are answering all of those questions for yourself and for the team and then you document that basically make sure all the designs are there are on the are, are prepared and there you start production you know you start writing story you start writing the uh, all the all the quests you start you know making assets writing the code for all the features and putting it together and then you go from draft to pre-alpha, to alpha, to pre-beta, to beta, then you start to release candidates and then you start the polishing phase, you know, with um, preparing the game to the shipping and then you ship and then in most cases you work on the patches, you know, to, because even perfect games at the release require patches when millions of people play it. So those are normally the stages of each project. And again, if the game is smaller, those stages are sometimes shorter, you know, Sometimes this is a matter of weeks, sometimes it's a matter of years, depending on the game, really. Okay, Chums, ready? You know, let's do that gig. Uh, Majuka5 asks, what do you think about the leaks GTA 6? I mean, I talked about the leaks uh, already like two hours ago. Uh, so my friend, if you can like, you know, check uh, when the VOD will be available, you can scroll back because like I spend a lot of time answering this question. And discussing this, um, and I and I don't want to like you know half ask my question now really quickly because this requires proper care to answer this question. And it was around an um, hour and a half to two hours mark when I was answering that question. And also I'm also like posting my streams on YouTube with timestamps, so this stream is gonna land um, tomorrow on the YouTube with the timestamps when I'm gonna timestamp that that for sure. So you can also like, you know, go back there and check it tomorrow uh, if you feel more like that. Hades asks, do you plan further development of Redmond? I mean, we have announced or said that we are definitely going to like uh, support the Redmond in a way of, um, you know, making sure it's stable, it's back fixed, if anything is actually happening to it. But nothing more I can reveal, you know, uh, regarding the Redmond because Again, um, uh, again, Hades, it's a question about the future content, my friend. I'm sorry. Did El Capitan send you? Yep. I'm V. Oh, hello, moment, Pedro. Please. Sorry. Be right with you. Okay, freaking Pedro's on his, on his uh, computer. Well, it, it looks like he has some fucking interesting setup here. Oh. A hacking, aren't we? Okay. Hacking, aren't we? Hmm. Okay. Let me check it. Is there anything interesting here? Some euro dollar. Okay. Ooh, some shard. Uh, about chemicals. This is from the. This is from the game. We already read that. Can we check that computer? Hmm. Full body conversion. Pedro and electrical bills. What? 
Okay. He got fucking bills. He got had he got his bills um renumerated. Poor person. God damn it, so it's happening to all of us, you know, you can see Cyberpunk has so many, like, current, you know, traits and topics. Uh, holy shit, that's a long email conversation. Anyway, let's check it, my friends. Uh, Phobie asks, will Red Engine be obsolete now with the next Witcher game on, uh, using Unreal Engine? Because you always expanded the engine to the technical limits and uh, seeing that fade... Would be very sad. I mean, why do you think we would we wouldn't expand? We wouldn't do the same with Unreal. Like, what fucking stops us? Nothing, right? Like, I don't think there is a reason. There is a reason, my friend, to be sad, oh, Phobie. You know, because please remember that all the decisions we made, we made those decisions to make fucking great games, right? Like, this is my best interest and all the devs' best interest and our board's best interest to make amazing games for you on amazing engines, right? So the decision we made is driven by that, you know, to deliver an amazing experience, so let's sit back, you know, lay back and watch, you know, uh, what we do, I think, but I don't think there are reasons to be, to be sad, you know, uh, I don't think any of our games look bad, uh, you know, uh, I, I dare to say that Witcher 2, Witcher 3 and, and Cyberpunk, at least at the release, they were like the most beautiful games at the time that we released, you know, probably it's still hard to find game that stands up to cyberpunk, um, you know, with the with the visuals. Um, so I don't think there is a there is the reason to be to be that worried. Uh, Magic Pain Glove Road Cyberpunk looks amazing with RDX, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, anyhow, um, my chums, Pedro is talking to Dr. Boris Borisovich Fedorov. Okay. Send the eddies or whatever it is uh, you use over there. Yes. First installment, I receive it. What do you mean first? We settled on fixed price. What is my entire savings down the drain? It seems we have a misunderstanding. I apologize, but the funds you sent not enough for full body conversion. Uh, you must send more. Do not think just because we are a socialist country we do such uh, procedures for free. Please, I'm really sick. I have ALS. How am I supposed to get the money? I am sure you will find the way. Will you be waiting for me in the uh, Abakan? Like, for real? Yes, in Abakan. Do not question my integrity. <laughs> Okay, electrical bill. Los Papalas Motel Administration is talking to Pedro Aymar. Dear uh, Mr. Aymar, we would like to inform you that due to your excessive electric usage, the room rental fee for the last three days has horribly increased in accommodance with the last Papalas Motel rules and regulations. Please settle your outstanding payment by 11 a.m. Today. Uh, thank you for the information. I'm sending you the overdue fees plus an invest payment for another week at the motel. He was fucking using some electricity, my friend. Okay, what are you? What you were charging here? You know, what are you were charging here? Your car. Your shaving devices. What else? Aha! I knew it. Well, I'm actually not sure where that is, but he definitely, he definitely needed, um, definitely needed uh, electricity. Looks awesome, Yaman007 <laughs> says, yeah, um, vo voice acting as excellent as ever. Pavo fix those creepy kids at Reverse Place. I mean, uh, why do you think this is an actual bug, my friend? Tell me. Tell me, why do you think it's a bug? Here to tell me why I'm waiting. Until I make sure... Full sentences. Use them. S sorry, I needed to make sure you weren't followed. I think we're okay. Ah, sorry. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Pedro. <laughs> His toothpaste runs around his electricity, I yeah, clearly... You can still back out if you got cold feet. You can still back out, you know. 
Look, you're shaking like a loose exhaust pipe. Maybe this ain't the job for you. No, I've got it all planned out already. Oh, yeah? I have a fucking bad feeling about this, Pedro. Uh, I'm not... Okay. El Cap tells me you're running a jump. Could use some help. Mm-hmm. I'd like to, uh, borrow a company truck. Oh, yeah? You want to rob your employer? Well, yes, but not so loud, please. <laughs> yeah, of course, fucking... <laughs> you need to chill. Ever done anything like this before? Okay. This is your first time, right? A jump like this? <laughs> Jesus, Pedro. <laughs> Perfect. But I'm well prepared. Oh, yeah? Why am fucking skeptical, Chums? Tell me. Zeradek will find out it was this you. This is an act of war against a megacorp. You prepared to deal with the blowback? <laughs> they won't let this go. Jesus, Pedro. I know. Okay. Pedro's like okay, fucking then. ready to What's go full plan? in. Right, the plan. Uh, here's what I have so far. Yeah, Pedro. Tell me. Our target is an automated Zeta Tech transport hauling AV thrusters. Its route changes daily via a randomizer. Jeez. So how do we track it? I refactored the randomizer. I know how it'll work. Sure. So you can predict its path. Then what? I'll stop the truck first, then breach its system. Where do I come in? You'll be there waiting already. You'll hop in and follow my instructions to steal it. Okay. I quite, I quite like it. Did you ever meet Sharami? No, I didn't. I didn't. I met Kamil Kula, the Polish uh, voice actor for V. Uh, and a few other uh, voice actors, but not not Sharami. I would love to. Yeah. How involved were you in the voice work for the game? Well, I mean, not much, my friend. I mean, well, quite a, a bit, but not much. What uh, we are doing normally as directors is uh, I'm sent samples from different actors, uh, actors and actresses regarding the roles. And then basically few people, normally it's me and um, our uh, narrative director, Igor Sarzyński, it's Boris Pugac Murashkevich, our adaptation director, um, it's uh, Mikołaj Shved, our, uh, our um, adaptation manager. We are normally like listening to the voices and trying to compare the samples that we got from a screenplay uh, of people performing to the imagination of the character we have. And basically, we opinionate each voice, and sort of based on that, uh, um, I think Boris and, and Mikoai are making like a final call. Okay, let's take this person, that person, and so on. So, basically, that was my part. Like I listened to ton of examples, uh, like from um, from uh, the cyberpunk. I listened to like all main characters, like everyone, and ma like majority, a lot of the side characters as well. Um, I think like pretty much like or because very often it is like this that when you have like the actors there's like one or two that are kind of standing out that are like very obviously like the best um doing there so we are like trying to balance you know people that you know in for for important roles that people have some experiences but also have the proper voice you know to it and and can act properly and can be guided properly on a session because also like the way how actor is following the um director's like hints and and direction is also also matters quite a lot so trying to balance that and then pick the proper person. So that's kind of my involvement. And then basically after the voices, the recordings are happening with um, with our, um, you know, adaptation director with Boris, with Mikoai, after those recordings are happening, then this the sounds, uh, the, the, the files are sent to the studio and then we all like experience that. And then basically mm, majority of us, majority of the devs really, so like quest designers, but it's mostly on cinematic designers, open world designers, as well, we opinionate the voices and we do something that is called a performance pickups. So we point out the lines that were like misperformed, that for instance, the context wasn't understood well enough uh, and so on. And then we send them to recording again. Um, and basically those performing performance pickups are combined together with the first performance. And that creates a full pool of the lines that given actor is performing. Um, and we usually do quite a bit of performance pickups because we want our games to be voice acted well um so i'm also like a person that is looking into that and making like but in here together with other designers 
making sure that we have everything opinionated, you know, regarding what we like, what we don't, and so on. So it's like we pretty much talk daily about like actors' performances and so on. Um, Mainly, we are mainly doing it for Polish and for English, like mainly for English and for, for Polish. Polish is a bit secondary, but it's also, also like our main language we're working um, in the in case of cyberpunk. And um, all like other people who are natives for another language, so let's say German, they serve as a help for German language. Uh, so, for instance, Miles, Philip, uh, Sarah, they are helping out to opinionate, you know, the voices for German language, as we have like uh, a bit like a lot of uh, German speaking devs who are natives. So to make sure that it actually sounds properly. And we kind of do that with all the languages. That's the way it works. If we don't have a specialized person in a special language, then we normally have a vendor, a separate like company that's working with us. Normally where we have established relationship for a given language where um, the uh, that, that discussion is happening, you know, regarding quality of voices, regarding the pickup sessions and so on. Um, yes, uh, 18 minutes remaining. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see. Uh, Camille. Yeah, Gordon is asking for what uh, till the end of the stream because I'm normally streaming till 11:30, and just like Camille is, is saying, that we we should try to wrap it. Um, why swipe trusters? Okay, let's listen. What do you to need Pedro. these glow holes for anyway? They're not too big, easy to sell, and well worth hundreds of thousands. A drop in the bucket for the higher-ups, but for me, it'll change my life. What's in the chip? What's on it? Chinese icebreaker. Should punch a hole in Zeta Tech security. Okay. Can't hack our... their... truck without it. <laughs> can track the... can hack the drag without it. Okay. Where do you want to take the truck? Where should I wait for the truck? place called Kenmore Cafe. Thank you so much, Kira, for being with us. The truck should drive by around 5 p.m. every day for the next few days. I'll call once you're there. Okay. Pedro, let me be real for a sec. You're clearly not the rebel type. Why do this? I'd rather not talk about it. Should I force him to tell me? I'll force him to tell me. Spit it out, Pedro. I don't like unknowns. I have ALS. What's that? Doesn't ALS, sound good. ALS, what's that? Doesn't sound so good. Three months ago, I was still walking. Three months from now, I'll trade my chair for a bed. I won't be able to lift a finger, utter a word, not even take a shit without help. I figure I got nothing to lose. Why not take a chance, right? Mm, so for him, it's kind of like one-way street in a way, you know? Force, it's very similar to this curse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, che off. Uh, thank you so much for the sub, my friend. Um, what you gonna do with robbing a truck? What's that gotta do with robbing a truck? If I'm gonna get out of this body, I need the money. Come again? Mm-hmm. A full body conversion. I've been talking to a ripper out in Abakan, Siberia, oh. Dr. Fedorov. Oh, we checked your fucking emails. And for a lot cheaper than in Night City or Tokyo. I'm suspicious, seriously, fucking Pedro. You sure about his shit? How's it so much cheaper? I read that it's become a pretty standard procedure over there. The area's heavy industry, harsh conditions. Normal human bodies don't last long. Oh. What's the catch? To even get on the waiting list, you have to submit a production obligation. Meaning what? A contract. Oh, Committing yeah. Committing yourself to several years in local mines or factories. <laughs> Jesus, doesn't Gotta sound say, cool. this op doesn't exactly sound corp grade. No, it doesn't. I don't know, but they're never short on volunteers. <laughs> God. You actually sign in that thing. No, I'll pay up front. And this Ripper, he just operates on foreigners? Cash under the table in a party clinic? Maybe his state pension isn't cutting it. I don't know. How are you ever gonna get to the USSR? How are you even gonna get to the USSR? 
Bobsonovska, hello again. Hello, Bobsonovska. I'm familiar with Zetatex search protocols. They have blind spots in seaports. So I go first by boat to Vladivostok, then to Abakan by train. You're serious? That could take a couple weeks, maybe even more. This I'm guy. prepared. Okay, well, he's, he's like, definitely fucking prepared. Jesus. Um... He probably also believes those emails in his extended car warranty uh, put Pedro flatlined. Where you learned about this guy? How'd you even find this Dr. Fedorov? Some international database? Well, yeah, how else? You know those aren't the hardest eggs to crack, right? You sure this ain't a scam? No, it's not, I'm sure. How? How can you be sure? Listen, I just need those thrusters, please. I need your help. Okay, let's go. Okay, count me in. Be in touch soon. Thanks. Remember, intersection just before Kenmore's Cafe. Five sharp. Be there. Hey, voice from games. Uh, nice to have you, my friend, with us. Um, okay, take the shard. Let's go. Is it another shard? Mm hmm. Desperate measures. I see. Okay. Okay, we need to. We need to. Uh, okay, I think. I think this is from the base game, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. Are you watching Rings of Power, House of Dragons? Uh, we started watching uh, Rings of Power. I saw all four episodes so far. So yes, watching the. Um, watching this one. Um, I'm quite interested. I have to say. It's not like the best thing in the world, but I'm I I got quite uh, I quite like it, you know. I also almost finished like everything on the Disney Plus with uh, Sapphire, you know. Uh, the the last one that we're finishing is She-Hulk, but it's damn the She-Hulk is not really, it's not really great. I have to say, it's sad because she could be a cool character in this show. Is just in a way wasting her, but. You know, I mean, I don't know. I understand it's not everything can be, you know, glorious and, you know, you you, you can't have like on everything as 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 Marvel, you know, the, their their best team, you know. Um, it's like sort of understand. Okay. Let's uh, let's wait, tombs. Then, because we're supposed to. Mm, interesting, interesting place. Looks definitely like like the setup. Uh, yeah, got it. We need the post credit scene with V twerking. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The twerking scene was so strange. It was just so off. I mean. Okay, tombs. Sit and wait. I'm I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the fucking action. I'm feeling the action, Tombs. It's me. I know. <laughs> okay. Eyes on that intersection. Okay. Okay. The the brigade stopped the cars. Go to the truck now. Okay, Tombs. Fucking get to the truck, I guess. Interesting door. Cause I, uh, I, I don't know. Did you guys ever faff around here long enough? Maybe we should faff around because it's more fun. They're here. I'll just faff around a bit. <laughs> Cause if you're like quick enough. Stay focused. Understood. Okay. Yeah, but basically, like. Um, like the way we have built those new gigs is that like uh, they they react to everything you do like they should react you know ideally of course you know oh shit oh shit <laughs> okay that was like that was unexpected that was unexpected like Jesus Christ that's what you get out oh, yeah, more fun huh I mean that was more that was supposed to be more fun but holy shit it's Understood. just let me uh I need to um 
I was ex I was hoping this to crit. It did. It did crit, but it didn't. Oh shit! Fuck! Oh shit! Police warrant. No way! I was nice. I I seriously I was nice. Shit, this is police, police drone. I thought it's a... Is it police? I'm not sure actually, to be honest. This went, this went to complete this array really quickly. Oh shit. Okay guys, let's not wait for them. <laughs> let's just, let's just go there really, really quickly. Let's just go there really quickly. Let's just go there really quickly. Um, thank you for the death tribute the Hudan wrote. Oh, thanks, man. Um, holy hell. Yeah, because they're like, there's... Th okay, there are two guys arriving from here. Okay, I need to be ma more fucking strategic about this shit. Okay, that was good. Okay, that was good. Okay, doing well so far. Pedro, I'm trying to make you proud. Suspect is hiding nearby. That's amazing. Nice Woo. work. Worked, tubes. I I was literally fucking clenching my teeth. Honestly, okay, let's get this shit out of here. Uh, save it. Let's jump on a passenger seat. Uh, time to get that Zeta tech truck. I'm in. Slot the splinter to the right of the wheel. Okay, let's go. And as you can see, like, those are new gigs, right? So they are, like, m a, a bit more advanced and compl complex. Um, and there's a bit more going on Talk with to me, them Pedro. than with the gigs. Uh... Got it. Okay, connected. I have control. I'll drive it. So I just kick back, soak in the view? Eyes <laughs> open. Cocksuckers could show up any minute. Okay, we are going to Tire Temp. Tire Empire. Tire Empire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just see fucking how it goes, my chumps. Let's just enjoy the view. In terms of games, thanks for this. Gotta go. No worries, in terms of games. See you. Jesus Christ. Easy, Pedro. I'm so shit in this. Oh wow, I sh I literally I'm trying to shoot the drivers. Oh, I managed. Okay, I managed. What the hell? That didn't work out badly, I have to admit. Okay. Of course. Took down the driver. Oh, I can't switch. I was trying to switch guns. Okay. We are doing well, my dears. I was uh, training on Call of Duty. Oh shit! I was. I. I spoken too early. Will I fucking survive? Great. No need to think. That's amazing. Nice work. Thanks, Pedro. Be better fucking drive well, Pedro. Jesus. They, they, the runner's on me. You handle oh, it. Oh shit. Take the wheel. Got it. Yeah. And here you can see, you know, like that, that 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 that's what I was talking about. Like we just introduced like a bit more variety in those gigs and so on. So, you know, um like different right kinds there. of Yeah. Like different kinds yeah. of objectives and so on. Uh different things Keep that going. you have to you can do. Oh, yeah. You can also, okay. like, as a player, fail them in many different moments um, right now. When you, like, faff around and don't really do it. Okay, chooms. Let's go. There we 
everything okay? I hope so. I can hope everything's okay, my dears. I delivered your car. Oh, that's a nice find. Interesting. Mind your damn business, yeah? Uh, sure. I'm just stealing. That's if that's okay. It worked. We did it. Holy shit. Yes, Pedro. Fingers crossed for you, Pedro. Safe travels. Fingers crossed for you, Pedro. A thousand times, thanks. The longer we chit chat, the easier it is for Zeta Tech to track us. Again. Of, of course. Over and out. Yeah, see ya. Oh, and the end, and that's my mark. Well, well. Got ourselves a real edge runner, huh? Uh huh. You're a lunatic. Waiting and baiting the corpos like that. I fucking love it. <laughs> okay, back to biz. Pedro's happy, so we're golden. Eddie's flowing to your account now. Gig's closed. Oh, thank you, Captain. I appreciate it, my friend. Okay, let's check, basically. Let's check what you guys are talking about, uh, about the hidden place. Oh, yes, um, it, it, the Le Famous. Le Famous, uh, uh, Le Famous guy. Jesus Christ. So this is basically when you have the tire empire here. It's, it's here. Cool. What? Can I loot you, my friend? How am I supposed to... Oh. How am I supposed to loot you, my friend? Let me try it. Aha. Nice. Arcade conversation with Woody Feldman and Alex Stephen Stevens. The famous guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. The famous guy was fucking everywhere on, uh, you know, Reddit at some point, you know. Everyone loved him. Okay, guys. Uh, with this one shard and we're wrapping up the stream. Let's give it all what I have. Woody, F Woody Feldman and Alex Stevens. Let's try it. The fucking animals offering you the protection. Man, don't they know you are in a royal? I do best, but I think they're forgot weeks now. They've been trashing cars and scaring off my customers and my shops barely staying afloat as it is. Like, the fuck I'm pay paying you? Maybe someone from the 6th could come to clean this man up? They there now? Yep, marking the terrorism or the people court behind the, the shop. Be right there. Y you alone? They, they got a whole pack of them. They're simple creatures, Alex. Evolve them alpha, the rest will run off of the tails. Teen their legs. <sighs> okay, man, if you say so. Uh, that didn't work out, I guess. That will. Oh, well. Well. <laughs> okay, my dears. Um, I think that would be it for today. You know, I will save um, right now here, uh, and we are going to, oh uh, yes, the uh, 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 cloud saves are enabled, and we are going to be uh, finishing the uh, stream uh, for now. Uh, it was awesome uh, today uh, to uh, play for you, I really had fun. Uh, I'll play some music while we are chilling. Um, and I really wanted to, you know, uh, thank you all guys for staying here and for playing and for supporting Cyberpunk. It's really awesome. Uh, and I can't wait for you to put your hands on oh, what we are cooking for you. The same as it was with the patch. So thanks for chipping in, Pavel. Thank you so much, Kazuliski, uh, for being here. I literally uh, appreciate your presence, uh, my friend, as always. Um, uh, we played Outsider no more already, so maybe this time around something else. What you guys think? Um, let me look at my playlist. Uh, what we can, um, what we can play of something, uh, some uh, banger. I think maybe maybe this one, because you guys uh, love the atmosphere. Um, also, be the appreciation to Kogito and Sapphire on a busy night in chat. Oh yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, be, been good to know you. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty telling. Um, Misha Pavel put live streams on YouTube. I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, that's the, that's the plan. Uh, thanks all Reds and the mods. Um, 
play tribute, uh, play trouble in uh, Haywood. Yeah, never stop fighting. Uh, okay then, my dears. Um, so wrapping up the stream, I wanted to thank all the uh, reds and moderators that we had here. Um, Ayano, our UI producer. Uh, Chivog, our customer support engineer. Mazi, our art QA. Um, our lead art QA. Uh, Miles, our acting lead uh, level designer. Um, Chivok, our customer support engineer. Kaide Kapuściński, our acting, our uh, cinematic lead for The Witcher Saga. And I think those are all reds, if I'm not wrong. Um, thank you so much, Sapphire, my dear girlfriend, uh, for being here with us all night and modding. And thank you so much, Kogito, as always. My friends, we are going to see each other in a week from now. I wish you a fantastic week. And I hope you are going to play some cyberpunk during that week. If you have any feedback, please write on Twitter or Reddit. I'm going to be watching and reading everything. All the best, my dears.